All right, as I was saying, yes. we're here with a mother-daughter duo. Um, welcome back again. Total transparency. This is their second time on. The first episode <laughs> got lost. Hey, you guys filmed the whole thing and it just the got lost. Entire thing. We were drunk. It was a good time. We're gonna have a good time again. Again, thank you guys for coming. Uh, I know you as Mama D, but Deanne oh, yeah. is what you guys know her on Instagram. Um, and then we have her daughter Jasmine, Jasmine. here. Also, if you guys probably follow her already, I would say. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of males that uh, follow us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for making time again. We appreciate it. Thank Thanks. you so much for having us. It's yes. an honor. I know we were supposed to do like a Halloween theme. That's like kind of what you wanted to do. But... Oh, I know. But then I was, really? waiting, I was yeah. waiting for you to bring it up. I'm like, is he going to say something? <laughs> and you didn't. I'm like, I guess, okay. What kind of Halloween theme? Like oh, wear costumes? Like yeah. costumes. Yeah. Costumes. Like costumes on here? Uh -huh. We should have. Oh, I didn't even know. <laughs> Is that supposed to be a theme? We should do like some vlogs together. Like not podcast related. Just like some fun, cool vlogs or something. Yeah. Oh, we would have came as Oompa Loompas. Oh, yeah. Oh, I wonder God. if we look dark. I guess it's the after. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so funny. They walked in and they were like, <laughs> I was like it looks like you guys just came from vacation. Yeah, it looks like a vacation town, not yeah, like the Oompa Loompa town. Yeah, it does. It does look like good. vacation. So <laughs> it's good. It looks Hers good. Hers so Mine is really, really dark. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's like triple as dark as hers. That's why I'm like full on like turtleneck covered. <laughs> oh my God. So how, I, I want to kind of get into, I know a lot of people know you guys from social media. Mm -hmm. I've known you guys for a very long time. Um, but where do you feel like when meeting people, how do they know you guys? Like most people, how do they know who you guys are? Most people no, know me as Kiarmia. Kiarmia. So that's the first thing I always uh -huh. get. And, and then, I, and then just, I don't know. Yeah. My, do you get like your, your Kiarmia's daughter or do you get? Sometimes, but not, not most of the time. I mean, I don't know if it would be like 50-50, maybe like 70-30. But I don't know. They just know me as Jasmine, as Jasmine. I'm from Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the most part, yeah, Jasmine Chiquita. And I do think. people still refer to you as Kiarmia? All the time. They in do. Public, in public, yeah. And I always forget I'm Kiara Mia because yeah. I don't come out of my house often. I remember you posted that. You posted you were at dinner always. and you're like, I forget that I'm Kiara always. Mia. And mind you, like, I, I forget, like, I'm not in public shops and no matter where I go, someone's like, oh my God, Kiara Mia, can I take a picture? And I'm always like, oh yeah, that's me. <laughs> who, who is it though? Is it like just random male, like older males or just young, younger males oh, yeah, or both? No, no, it, females? It, you know what <laughs> but, but it reminds me? Like, I, I forget I'm 46. I really do. I think because I had, hang out with my daughter and all her she friends. You look amazing for 46. Yeah, and they're so young and all my friends are so young. So I'll literally have guys like, 25 years old and be like oh my god i've been masturbating since i was 12 and i'm like Ew. Ew. <laughs> no and i literally and every single time i'm like oh they must have the wrong Some porn star stuff you keep to yourself <laughs> i always think that i'm like i'm like you must be talking about the wrong no, porn star it's, it's but funny. i forget i've been around that yeah. long wow that he literally was 12 when i came like when i became cure me and i'm like jesus christ i keep forgetting like in my head it's still kind of like oh a couple years in the industry like you really don't add on the years after like five years, you're just like, oh, it's 10, 15 years already. You're not thinking. So even, not until like a young guy comes up to me and I'm like, even what? for myself, when, like, when I post you guys or when you've been in my post on Instagram, I'll get people saying, Kiarmia, Kiarmia all the time. The goat, Kiarmia. And yeah. I forget too the because goat. like, <laughs> and I feel like I haven't seen that name like attached to you in so yes. long that mm -hmm. even I forget yeah. sometimes too. And I'm like, oh shit, that's right. Like I forget. No, and literally, I never even posted, like, the. I even put myself in, like, Legend or the GOAT arena. Yeah. Because for so long, I was, like, building a name. And I guess, I mean, we're, we're 15 years in now, so it's interesting because I started a TikTok and a lot of the videos are going viral. Mm -hmm. And I have my name, whether it's Coach Deanne Munoz, because I'm doing coaching, like, you know, my life coaching and the motivational stuff. And, the, and all my comments is, like, all 100% yeah. are all, the GOAT, the Legend, <laughs> the GOAT. And wow. I'm like... Has it like it's really mm -hmm. been that long? So now I'm like, all right, I'm gonna take that. What, what, was, <laughs> yeah. was there like a, um, you know how like there's like a, an award ceremony now for? Is oh, it was yeah. there one back when you were doing it or no? Yeah, well, AVN's yes. always been around. Yeah. So then, did you win awards that? Like, if you're like the goat, did you win any you of those nominated. awards? No, 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 no. She's been nominated. It's interesting. AVN's very like political. Okay. Mm. <laughs> so like any other award ceremony, it's it's political. Who you know, yeah. what they're trying to push the agenda wise. Okay. Always the same exact okay. people, the same race. Always that. Yeah. Oh. But you have been nominated. Uh, like uh, yeah. most, like a few. I, everybody's been nominated. <laughs> but She's the people, like, oh, yeah. 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 I'm like, that's you. Yeah. yeah. So I have a question because obviously you know your mom's background. Mm -hmm. How old were you? 
you when you found out and what was your reaction to that? <laughs> um, this is a fun Freddy. story. Okay, so 10. Do you want to do wait. a shot before you do it? Oh, yeah, let's do uh, it. Let's, let's, let's pour let's it. Let's do a let's shot. Pour it up. I'm just so pour curious. Up. I never actually you keep talking. asked, so I'm really oh, no, curious about that. a huge, long story with yeah, that. Yeah, and I'm, I'm like, I've always been so curious, but at the same time, too, I think I've always admired because even though you, you, um, were a porn star mm -hmm. and your daughter like she you raised her so well like she's still very like yeah respectful and just like she classy, carries herself well school. she's super classy mm -hmm. and yeah. so obviously like that goes to show you have very great parenting yeah. skills no matter what but i've always been so curious like how you found out mm. so, <laughs> so i'm excited for this story <laughs> uh, so i think i was in 10th so it kind of so she didn't start as a porn star i think um she I guess I didn't even know this, but I found out later on that she started stripping, I think, at 21. Okay. She said most people start, like, there, and then, like, you escalate or you work your way Yeah, you go there, <clears throat> webcam bachelor parties, oh, yeah, some so private. I, I think I found her webcamming Ooh, site. I think that's what I had found. Yeah. And oh, you found it? it. Well, I, didn't, I wasn't searching it up. Okay, so I, I was at home. I had the computer on, and I had to go do an errand for the day. But mind you, like, I would delete the search engine yeah. and the history. But during the day when she was at school, I would, like, handle what I got to handle. And it only worked during the hours she was at school. But I happened to have to go run and go grab something real quick. And I thought I was, I mean, I've never not got back on time. Yeah. But I ended up having to go somewhere else and do something else. And then completely slipped my mind that I hadn't turned off the computer or erased anything and not till I go home to like eight or nine that night I was walking up the staircase to my apartment and I was like <laughs> and neither did my girlfriend at the time who was living with no but like my, 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 my partner yeah like my partner mm -hmm. and I was literally like I remember getting to the office oh, and she being didn't like know either no and I was like holy fuck holy <laughs> fuck I was like holy fuck like I oh like what oh my god I'm like I'm gonna walk in this house and I already know they're nosy my ex my girlfriend's nosy she, I know she's gonna go through my my search engine and I was like fuck I left it open and I was I just literally was like I'm walking into my you already death. knew <laughs> the shit storm you already yeah. knew to the yeah. inferno wait of but my how did you even know yet um if, that you left it like I hadn't said anything yet though right because I knew that I was I was supposed to have run and do an errand you and knew come you right left back, it open but something else happened that I wasn't gonna be able to come home on time and I didn't remember until then that I was specifically was like well I'm gonna just go grab this down the street and then come right back and I didn't so that's why I knew when I came up the stairs I was like Oh. The lap, the, the computer, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I was like, "Fuck!" I already knew, like it was like the inferno was like. <laughs> I was like walking into it, like <laughs> my death. <laughs> I've never been so uncomfortable. Like I've never been so scared. Or like I, I, so I got. I was like, "How can I detach from these emotions?" Yeah, and I just like slowly turned the key, in and I was like. Oh my god! Like you just like you have to take accountability. There's no yeah. I couldn't go There's, home. You, yeah. That was my home. Yeah, I ever opened the door and just like I mean, um, like somebody was ripping my skin off, and I was just like. Fuck. So you already knew for 1,000%? 100%, oh. I already knew. I knew that you guys knew. And when I walked in, everyone was quiet. They were both in their rooms <laughs> quiet. She, doesn't use a, she didn't used to use a computer that much, right? Just me or no? No, but I mean, I know she was looking up like my search histories. Of course. Uh Oh, so she was checking on your oh, yeah, shit everything. every day. You, you, you never do that with your with your man. You never check like his. Uh, um, I mean, used to in the beginning. Well, there you go. Anymore. I no? think because we trust each other so much now, so I don't at all anymore, and he doesn't either. But before in the beginning, yeah, we, well, she was a cheater, so you people oh, cheat. That's what yeah, I mean. Like so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, wait. So so you <laughs> walk in and it's quiet, and that's it. Okay, now you then you go from here. Okay, wait. Well, you're asking how I found out. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I found out. Um, so before this, so part during happened, the day, yeah, when she comes home and I'm gone. <laughs> yeah. So um, I went on the computer. I don't know for what. Remember, like we always used to do pictures on the little photo booth on yes. the clap uh -huh. Mac. And I think I, as soon as I just oh, like um the sleeping Take screen off, went sleeping. off. It was just like a website, and I was like a picture of like her and um and a, her girlfriend or something like in like. Picked, I just never seen it like this, like in pigtails. <laughs> no, they weren't like acting like little girls, but right. they just had their hair weird. And, uh -huh. all. and I don't know if you, I don't remember if you guys were topless or not. I don't know if it was topless or okay. tiny. They've, it wasn't porn or nude, fully nude. But I remember being like, it must have been topless because I was like, what? I was like so confused. <laughs> yeah. As a kid, like I wasn't, I feel like they've always, her and my dad have always shielded me a lot growing up from like, and you were sexuality, 10? sexual, se no, tenth grade. Oh, tenth grade, yeah. Yeah, but I was like, a so this is right around the time I knew, I knew you. Oh, exactly yes. that time. That's my right. ex-girlfriend. Yes. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, yeah. who she's talking about? Yeah, from yeah, the ex, yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh -huh. And then um, I, I was just confused, and I was like, I know I felt uncomfortable, and I'm like, and I was just like, the world was scrolling, and it said like, I don't remember what it was saying, like, like bachelor parties or I don't know something mm -hmm. like that, and I remember just being like. 
Like, I was like, what? Like, I was confused, but I knew something about it felt wrong to me. I don't know. And then I just remember I was like, kind of was crying a little bit. And then I did, I just was like, oh my gosh, like, I don't even know, like, like what to say, what to do. Like, I couldn't even process it. So I don't remember, but I think I just didn't even say anything right away. And I think because I, I was like really close to her girlfriend at the time, I think I was like, I'm just going to wait till she comes home. And I'm, cause I felt closer to her at the time. Cause you yeah. know, I feel like you're rebel. That's like the rebellious age towards your mom for girls, of course. Girl, girls and moms, especially. So I was like, talk to her. I think I just showed her, talked to her about it. And then I don't remember what she said, but, and then I think we didn't, she just, I think she said she was going to talk to you about it. And then I kind of just left it at that from what I can recall. And then, um, I don't remember when you came home though, exactly details of what happened. Yeah, I came home, and I think Jasmine was in her room, which mind you, they're always in, like, the kitchen. Like, everyone's ready for me to cook and everything. Uh And the house was, like, dead silent, (laughs) and I was like, fuck, okay, I'm in the, like, I'm literally in the fire. And she's in her room, and then uh, my girlfriend's in our room, so I walked to the back, like, to put my purse down, and she's, like, sitting at the edge of the bed, just sitting there, and I was like. (laughs) Were you more scared about my reaction or your girlfriend's, or both was, like, the same equal? Equal. You did both. Okay. Just both, period. I, I yeah. knew you were going to tell her. I wasn't sure she saw it. Because if she saw it, I almost feel like she wouldn't have told you to protect you. Oh, for you sure. You know what I mean? I'm so sure. I was kind of yeah. like, but I'm like, but also, too, she's kind of vindictive like that. Like, well, let me tell her so we could both gang up on her yeah. kind of thing. Because they used to always gang up on me all the time. And I was just like, I didn't know who, where, where it was going to come from, her or her. And I was just like, and she was just sitting there. And I already knew. I was like, fuck, I just put my thing down. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> How did you hide it? Because she lived because, with you and they... Because she worked day, she would leave in the oh. morning to work. So I'd pack her lunch, send her to work, drop her off at school. So I knew both of them the were officially day. gone. Yeah. Because my girl, when she checked in, she was a UPS driver. Sounds like oh. somebody So when she cheating, checks huh? in, she can't just get up and leave. <laughs> yeah, of course. So it's like you're accidentally. Right. And then from there, I would go to my best friend Star's house. Oh, and, and then, then we would work throwing, over there. Throwing Star under the bus. <laughs> star. Shut up, Star. And this is DJ Starlet. For yeah. 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 yeah, so about, I'd always end everything exactly at three. And then I'd go home, take Take a shower, get her from school, start dinner, and then my girlfriend would get home. And it was like literally like smooth sailing, like like there was no question. You know what? That's what it felt like. I felt like I had a double life. I mean, she uh, did. Where yeah. I was like, so well, yeah. Where I was like, I don't even. Away. Yeah, I was like, I, I don't, don't even, even know, know her. Like, you know, you have like this image of your mom, or what people hold in their heads of moms of your mom, and then so you see this whole double life, and you're like, like what? Like no, like this isn't right. Like who are you? Like. Like just everything you know has just been like twisted in your head yeah. and you're just confused and you're lost and yeah. I think, I think that's the best way to describe yeah, it. Yeah, she was really upset because she felt like, like, you know, who, the one person you trust the most, like you think you know them and Sad the man. fact that like she did not know that, she was just like, it's the lie. It's the deceit. Of it's, course. She felt like the betrayal of, of like, yes. like, who are you then? Yeah. If, if I don't yeah, know everything right. about you. Yeah. And then, and then you have a good relationship with her dad now but mm-hmm. like did you tell him did you run and tell your dad oh no uh, oh he's known no. oh he, or did he know oh yes oh, he I was, knew since I was 21 he's, he's known every, he knows everything like about the me mo- they're like each other's like partner in crimes like the most transparent <laughs> like they so are he like, knew oh yeah he's always oh, known yeah. each other's twins kind of or something but yeah, yeah. but so, no I, I wasn't that close to him so i didn't okay okay yeah. what, what was your original reason for even i mean obviously financially i know it it's pretty lucrative. Was that like your first reason getting into it? I'm going to say, um, let's say we're, when I turned around 30, when I got around, I want to say like 31 years old. Now, mind you, from 14, I'd been in acting school, like all the prestigious acting classes mm. in Hollywood that you could imagine. Like I've studied like every method possible. I've been at every institute, every, like everything and anybody I've, I've trained with everyone in Hollywood from 14 to like 25. So, and I've had numerous agents and I've gone on, on auditions. I, and I did that whole thing. And around age 30, nothing was popping off yet. And I, and, I, and I'm pretty determined and yeah. like, I'm really consistent by age 30 though. All the girls that I started stripping with at 21, 22 were all huge name playboys, girls, wow. porn stars, owned two, three houses, had traveled the world, were like, you know, private invite right. to the Louis Vuitton, like opening stores. And I'm still struggling, you know, barely making ends meet, you know, doing what I got to do just to like, because, you know, it was frowned upon back then to be as a professional actress right. with any kind of adult kind of stuff. Right. And I was like, and we're turning around 30, 31. I was just like, man, like, I'm ready for a fucking house and a fucking Mercedes. And like, I'm right. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm, I just really, it just a moment of like, I give no fucks anymore. Like, yeah. this isn't working. You know, it's been a 15, what, 10, 
15, yeah, like a 15, 16 year journey with this. It's not happening. Like and you were willing to I, just give, yeah, just to get what you want. I was like, I was like, let me get in that. And I, and I really thought in my head, like, let me get famous this way and build my brand up. Yeah. And then maybe from there, something will happen from Kiara Mia. Mm-hmm. And I just literally was like, it was a <clears throat> quick decision of like, okay, like I'm making this decision and I know the consequences and I like, I have no problem. So that's why at first I started, well, let me start with webcamming, see how comfortable I get if this works. Then we could do the girl, girl, then from girl, girl to boy, girl. So I already knew in my head, like, and mind you, I'm what, I'm 31 coming in. I'm not 18. Yeah. So when I came in, mind you, I'd already learned, worked as a loan officer. I've learned and work in marketing. I've tried real estate. I tried graphic design. I went to school. I've, I've had so much training in sales. Like I came in knowing like residual income is the number one place you want to be making money. And at the time too, MySpace was out. So I was like, I don't know, I like, let's say, 50,000 followers on MySpace. If I could buy like, that one dollar from every person <laughs> to take sexy photos, why not? So that's kind of how we're ended up coming up where I'm like, well, let me make a website and I'll charge like a dollar and you could just come see all my stuff. So everything looked like I had a plan behind it. There wasn't like, yeah. oh, I'm just bored and I want to, or I want to be, you know, like I wanted this, do this. It was really like, okay, my, my girls are making this money. They've all built a fucking brand. You know, I've done none of that in the last 10 years. I'm ready to do this and I'm going to make that happen. I'm um, that transition and just go with what I'm fucking good at. I'm good at right. being sexy. Like I know how to do this very well. Yes. And, let's spend, <laughs> and, I, like, and I really, and I was like, I go, I'm going to make a brand out of it. I'm going to make a name out of it. And so I came in with the idea of sustainability. So how am I going to come in and make a name? And, and everything was like, it's law of the, the law of supply and mm-hmm. demand. Mm-hmm. So the demand was boy, girl, boy, girl. But I came in first just doing solos, which is a webcamming. Mm-hmm. And then from there, you know, when the money gets right a year later, you can be like, okay, girl, girl. You know, and then two, three years after that, I waited to even do my first boy, girl. So I was already Kiara Mia before even sucking a dick ever. Yeah. So I had already built that because I'd hung out with other big name porn stars. I was in their network of people. Like, like I made sure to stay in like relevant with that. So when I came out at four or five years in doing boy girls, you know what I mean? And then, you know, you wait two more years to start doing anal, but it takes you another level. You know what I mean? And then like interracial takes oh, you so another there's level. To there's this. so much levels. Like, like, yeah. in, like in pay, you mean? <clears throat> well, in pay, yeah. And what okay. happens is when you start no, doing kinkier things, up, I'm like, wait. When, when you start doing kinkier <laughs> things, your name goes even bigger because you, you're just like a dirty whore. Ah. You know, like, like and, girls and, that do gangbangs, yeah. everyone knows their oh. fucking names. Okay, so, so if you want to make it in porn, you, you got to start doing gangbangs. Gangbangs, anal, all that stuff is like a mandatory or you're no, just. No, it's not mandatory. No, I've never I mean, done as far, either. I mean, yeah, as far yeah. as like getting your name to like the yes, heights. Yes, yeah. Okay. But the problem in order is, to win an award. The problem is, is girls come at 18 doing that. Ah. So you just been ran through and, in six months, and yeah. there's nothing left for anyone else to see more right. of. I was gonna ask you too. I mean, you have yeah. a. You, do you encounter? I mean, even yeah. now or maybe during a lot of women that had that mindset as you have, like I'm gonna use it for this, or are they just using it because it's fun, it's quick money, you know? Because <laughs> no, I no, it's probably like ninety percent don't. They don't, huh? That's why, like, they, I think they say the average porn career is one year right now. One, one year. year at the most. Wow. And that's amazing to see how you've literally been in the game for so long. Granted, now you've like transitioned into like something completely different, right. which we'll talk about, but it's crazy to see how you've stayed in the game for so long and your name is still relevant. Like people still see you mm-hmm. and they still know who you are. No, yeah, and you didn't definitely. have to get gang bang or like yeah. all of that stuff in order to get there. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it really wasn't, it, like you said, like everything is like branding. Like, like yeah. what, who I'm, what, who's my target audience and like, how do I want to come off? And you so when you were saying yourself. like with my people always tell me like your daughter's so well mannered, like she's so kind, she's mm-hmm. so loving, like she's so old school in her thinking. And I felt like I even took that into my business. Cause if there was a signing, like a big convention, like those big porn conventions, right. you have girls in like booty shorts and their little bralettes and they're like shaking their ass and guys are grabbing their titties and ass. And mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck what they're doing. That's not me <clears throat> or my brand. And I've actually witnessed it because it's, it's people will think like they have this already in their mind. Like, Oh, you're a porn star. You're a ho- you're a hoe or you're this. Yeah. And your daughter's probably going to be like that. But like literally being out with you, I've witnessed you. She'll be dancing and you're just like, Jasmine, come over here. Yeah. Like you're very protective <laughs> and I'm like, her. You make sure she doesn't act up. Yeah. Like, Granted, she's not like that anyway. If you know Jasmine, yeah. she's not. But even I've seen how protective you are over her. Someone's even asked to see her feet and you're like, no. 
Yeah. I did it like in a friendly way, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah. But it's <laughs> true. So, so yeah. Psycho with yeah, me. yeah. Jasmine, so did yeah. you ever, have you ever once like thought like, hey, you know, because obviously your Instagram is, is super popping, right? Mm-hmm. And it's provocative pictures for the mm-hmm. most part. I'm pretty sure you've been approached by people like, hey, if you take your shirt off, if you do this and stuff like that, did you ever think about following your mom's footsteps at all? Ever? Uh, no. I never thought about doing like, for me, I, okay, so I guess like from how I can relate this is that what she's told me is most of the porn star girls or girls who are doing sex on OnlyFans, not all of them, but some of them, they come from like, I guess, like the girls who even start like illegally before, uh, 16, 17 shooting porn is like from a lot of sexual abuse or so, stuff like that oh, that makes sense. somehow crosses over into like then they're hypersexualized. And then even besides that though, there are some people that didn't go through that who are just hypersexualized mm-hmm. they're just very sexual people which and they're just open to like you know in their personal lives like threesomes all that type of stuff and for me I've, I've never even in my personal life done a threesome like I don't do any of that like I don't watch porn because my mom is in porn and I know all her girlfriends who yeah. do porn yeah, <laughs> like, so, so I you, know her. you have never, you have she never once this. see one of your mom's uh, videos no no never. I get that question so much yeah. I mean maybe I, I haven't watched but people will try to like randomly send like in send my DM like request a, it'll be a screenshot and I'll just like block them oh but it's God. not people like are a, so people are petty at the same time so too. yeah but I mean I don't know but it's also something where it's just like I've been reading this this new book recently um, about anyways that like um, I don't know what's that book that um, the, the book one that called? a pussy vagina book reclamation. it's called reclamation pussy. pussy or something it's a New York Times bestseller okay but it's also saying that like we also put this huge stigma on vaginas pussies on sex on this and that and we were raised up that way so like even when they send me that picture it's just it's something natural even if she's getting paid for it but I don't wa- I'm just like oh block you know what I mean because it's my mom I'm not gonna watch that but yeah. But yeah, I never got a, thought about getting into that because I'm not like that as who I am. Yeah, in true. my character and my soul, I'm not comfortable with that. Like I want to, I guess I, it's just more intimate for me somewhat. I don't know. I guess that's the only way I can put yeah, it. Yeah, because her boyfriend always says that too. He's like, he goes, she never wants to talk dirty. She just says, look in my eyes and make love to me. <laughs> no. She is, she is a lover, Wait, yeah. L- London, people- London talks to you about like that, uh, that like well, sex. No, it, it, Conversations like oh. a big group, like, like and this. I'll be hearing oh, yeah, like this. No. You should like, like, like their conversations. Like, no, and like, I would just be listening. Their conversations with yeah. and London and her are hilarious. Like yeah. you've well, never, you've, you've heard some of them. You said you wanted them oh, on yeah, with us. Yeah, it's yeah. so funny. Like, hey, hey, sh- shout out London for not Rocky being here next too, time. Last time he's like you and London. He's like I love hearing you guys. Talk. It's, so, it's the funniest thing because it's almost like a relationship therapy session. Every time yeah, you guys yeah. are together, it's so great. And you guys have a great like we do have a very open relationship. Like that's what I was gonna bring up next. It's not a taboo conversation. Like her talking about sex what she enjoys what she likes like like I want to normalize that we should be that. able yes. I, I, I want to teach people with that. you know like it's there's nothing wrong with nudity there's nothing wrong yes. with like making love Listen. there's nothing wrong with what your sexual desires yep. are like I don't ever want her to feel like she can't talk about it or True. be her or like that there's that it's wrong there's that's nothing like I'm the your new mom thing. Like, I'm, yeah. and that's what I do for a living like you have conversations I mean, when you're of age of course right. you know, when you're older people, do you guys get a lot of stuff from people like backlash from people because obviously if you go on your social media like your photos are very like sexy and provocative and think do you get people who will like say negative things about that because of who your mom I think is in or, the beginning, or no you know in the beginning, because okay. like now i'm almost 30 yeah. so in the beginning definitely a lot but you just like any social media account with big following can get hate over anything no matter what it could mm-hmm. be any freaking it could be like your car your apartment your whatever so um yeah i just think you just in the beginning you just ignore it and yeah. that's it because you're yeah. just gonna do what that's you do true. and yeah. they're no not matter paying what. your bills and you're making your way and you're trying to be an influencer you are so you're and like I, I don't care. And I feel the fact that we're we're so open about it and like and I'm and I'm open with her like if you follow my social media, I'm transparent about everything. everything. Like I don't try to be hide anything. So I think the yep. fact that like people on social media see that I own the fuck out of everything. Yep. Everyone in my mm-hmm. life backs me fucking up. Mm-hmm. Everyone's loyal to me. Yeah. There is no need. People, there's not. If you go through all my messages, you're not. Maybe once a month, yeah. you'll hear, "Oh, your kids must be embarrassed of you." And I'm like, "Oh, you must be a new follower." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because everyone, I'm like, like, you can't even come at me like that. Yeah. You can't even come at me if you're yep. if you're, if you're you one of my haters. Yeah. You've been following me for a long time. You can't even come to offend me like that because you know it's not offensive because everyone fucks with me heavy. And because and I think just too because your presence, like your energy, everything about you is just so genuine. Yeah. Like it's real, and you feel that when you're around you and and that's 
a lot of people will will hate on that because they and en- like they're more envious yes. of I it, love right? This, part. this is where I say <laughs> this is where I say this is why they why my enemies hate me, and I was it's. I'm a high value woman. Mm-hmm. So when I walk into a room, I'm thinking what value can I add to this room? Not what can I take? Right. So my name is always going to hold heavy weight. And even my ex's mouse or friends of these people who hate me, they're, they're so mad at why does everyone like her? Because I am a high value woman. That, and, that's, and that's period. So no matter what I do for a woman, my character and my integrity is what holds weight. Yeah. And people who don't hold that, people who are mm-hmm. toxic, people who are fake, people who are insecure are going to be despise me like, you suck dick for a living and everyone respects you, mm-hmm. but how? I add value to people's lives. It's not about what I physically do. Yeah. You could physically not be doing porn, but you could be a fucking toxic ass a bitch being person. crazy. Yeah. No one's going to fuck with you. Correct. Right. And you're thinking, well, why do they like her? Again, I'm a high value woman. And that's what I'm bringing to the table. Right. Period. I wanted to actually ask both of you, because you guys kind of asked me about like, um, well, I guess kind of, do you, the way you guys were raised up was like, were you comfortable? Like, did your parents have that sex talk openly with you? Were they like, Never. Oh, me no. Neither. Like, Never. even if like, if you like something like you couldn't even talk about like they were just like no we don't talk about that part uh, i don't anything. think i ever wanted to have a conversation with my mom about sex and my dad worked so much that he was never really around and my brother maybe a little bit i think mm-hmm. my brother was like kind of the first one that told me about condoms yeah but that's like the extent but i <laughs> yeah. mean i kind of found everything discovered on everything own, on my own okay. and like I, when i was younger i did date like older women and oh, so like so, they, yeah. so like when i was in my 20s i would date women that were like older like uh uh 27 or 30 did, and stuff you ever like that felt like they took advantage of you looking oh, back for sure, now 100 oh, percent. but it was it was a it wasn't like they took advantage of me it was like a give and take like i okay. they again they were high value women like they had their oh, own cars yeah. they had their own places i was like still kind of trying to like discover myself mm-hmm. i guess so i was i was around them being successful and they okay. used me for okay. sex <laughs> on my body you're like yeah. Yeah. Pee-pee. <laughs> but, uh, but, I mean, pee-pee. <laughs> but i mean it wasn't like i felt like there was only one time that i remember in high school like i was a freshman and then uh there was a girl that was a senior and she liked me and I was so nervous because she was older and I remember she took me into her room and she just literally started and I, I that's the first time ever I felt like fuck I don't want to be here oh, only damn. because I was so I was like what was I what are your what are your freshman 14 13 yeah, yeah. oh fuck. and she was yeah. like 18 and I was uh, like what well, the hell I didn't even know I didn't even know what's going now. on <laughs> <Statutory>. <laughs> no I mean I didn't even know what was going on honestly the whole entire time I was like what the fuck is happening and I remember she was drunk and I was just oh, like this fuck. is not how I envisioned that going down but no that's oh, the that only was your time. first time no no but i oh, mean like just one of the- i just like i had her like on a pedal stool so i thought like oh there's no way i'm ever going to be able to like have sex with her oh, and then the oh. first time i go to a party she's like hey let me talk to you and then all but drunk. then you didn't want to be there at that point dude i was <laughs> so like i didn't know what i was doing you know i, yeah. I think i had been with like maybe two girls and they were like yeah. seventh grade girlfriends yeah yeah yeah. but i mean it, your first time i mean as a guy <laughs> it's you, you ain't doing much dude yeah. Like your first time as a guy, I don't know how it is. For, I mean, obviously, it's London different for girls. said his first time was with two girls. Oh well, London's a fucking G. He's an overachiever. <laughs> overachiever, two yeah. girls. Yeah, but I also yeah. feel like it goes back to that experience. Yeah, I feel yeah. like when he kind of explains it, but for a guy, like guys are like, oh yeah, like he'll forever probably hold that. Like oh my gosh, but like it sounds like exactly what you just explained to yeah. me as a as a girl and a woman. Like that story always made me uncomfortable and. and I'm just like that's not okay because they were like like they were, I think older, they were right? like 18 too, yeah, yeah. and then they were just like both took him in the room because they thought he was cute and like had their way with him whatever. And he maybe he needs to shit, but I don't know. I see that as like not okay. I'm not, yeah. not even coming from a girlfriend point of view, but I'm just like I don't know. Or maybe as a girl, I'm holding it in my head like your first time should be with like your boyfriend or something, but. I don't know. They were just like the like the neighbor like the neighborhood like hoes or the something. The little neighborhood rats. Yeah, we all have those. Yeah. Yeah. yeah let, me, let me go to the back of the corner, like the alley and stuff like that. Let me touch this. You touch this. I think everybody does that, right? Like, maybe. Maybe. Like, you know what? I'm thinking like okay, for what me. About you? I, for, my, for me, no. I've never had that conversation. But also growing up, there was so when my parents met, my mom had. One son, my daughter had my my daughter. My dad <laughs> has two daughters, yeah. and then they have me, my sister, and my brother. So, okay. and then growing up, it was like four of us, and then one of my sisters would live with us. There was just so many people all around, so many kids all around. Like, mm-hmm. I think they just didn't imagine. And we were close in age. Me and my sister are eleven months apart, and my brother oh, wow. is like wow. older, so they're always on him. And then my little brother. Then my mom had um, 
my younger brother, six years younger than me. So mm-hmm. it was never really that like time to just ever have those conversations. Like yeah. we never really had them. But I also feel like at that point too, because growing up, my parents would be like so strict on us, you know, mm-hmm. like I would try, I couldn't, I would have to be like, can I go to the movies? And they would be like, it, I couldn't do anything when I was younger and I would have to like hide it because they were so strict on me. So I would be like, oh, I'm going to do this, but I would be lying and really doing this. So I really believe that when you, when you like growing up, like how you were so, you guys are so honest with each other in your relationship because you allowed, you allowed her A to be honest space, with you and you, yeah. you, you had that safe space. You didn't really hold her back probably. Mm-hmm. And which you were still a strict parent, but I think that starting off young and having that open relationship mm-hmm. when you get older you don't have to hide things yeah. or lie like or you, feel. you know and then even now as yeah. I'm older I'm a very private person I don't yeah. I'm not very open with a lot of things yeah. um just because I didn't grow up being open about a lot mm-hmm. of things you know so how did you learn about like you know like uh like private parts sex like if you touch yourself this feels like this or blah, blah, just blah. growing up like, and i always hung out with bad kids too <laughs> so it was okay. like i always hung out with bad kids so i knew you know and i was still like behind like behind everyone mm-hmm. was having sex before me you know yeah. in middle school and stuff but i think that i just yeah i just always hung okay out with so the bad like kids. like even that like i i had a discussion with my wife and she's like when the first time you like had sex i said middle school she goes <laughs> what <laughs> she thought it was like so what were you doing in middle school i said isn't that normal she goes no, no. that's not normal at all i go really she's like you're sleeping on the couch i, <laughs> no, I felt middle like like school. i, I felt like middle I school in trouble everybody for walking was home sex. with a boy in middle school really? and i would turn, yeah my mom was like get in the car like she because we would walk mm. home and she saw me walking home with a boy middle one school. time and she was like get in the car and i was like <laughs> sorry yeah it was they were they were straight. and then when i got in high school then they weren't strict and my mom wasn't as strict anymore and then after i grew up then she wasn't as strict but like she tried to be for a little bit. I think she tried too hard, though. You yeah. know what and I mean? birth control was never, like, uh, like she never talked to you about that? Or, like, you could have just been knocked up, just been like, oh, I didn't know. <laughs> I know, huh? Yeah, no. You think about she it, She didn't. Right? You know what? Mm-hmm. I'm thinking right and now. how did you not get somebody pregnant? <laughs> Dude, I know. There's been a, there's been a, there's been a couple... Um, <laughs> Uh, close. No, nothing. That, no, hey, chill. He's we don't like, have to. No, pro, there's been a couple. Where, no, there's been a couple of times where I was like, damn, I didn't, I didn't use a condom. But for the most part, I, I, I was pretty. Got at lucky? A, no, I got lucky. But at a young age, my brother told me like, oh, pull out. I would say like in seventh, eighth grade. Pull he, out? No, he was like, <laughs> use, use condoms. Um, and I think what fucked me up is the first time I didn't use a condom was with um, that, and I was like. Oh, Brian, he's a condom. No, I was like, this is way different. Okay, you know what was coming to me right now? The generations, because I feel like Jasmine's the age of generations. A lot, like the, a lot of these kids, these kids aren't having kids anymore. Yeah, they're not. But that's because we're talking to them about sex mm-hmm. and birth control yeah. and condoms. <laughs> because when I grew up, same thing. My parents, we, we would, I didn't even know what a clit was. I didn't even know what yeah. an orgasm was until yeah. I was nineteen. Wow. Yeah, that was after I was married. Yeah, and my yeah. girlfriend said the word orgasm, and I was like, "What is that?" And she was like. <laughs> You've never had one. I'm like, well, I don't know. How yeah. do I know what it is? <laughs> See, we're so close that I already know. She said that her friend had to explain to her how to have one. Yeah, she, and she, she said, said she tried, like, and she's like, I didn't sh- get one, and she had to explain again. So uh, yeah, and I was like, so how do I know if I had one? She's like, trust me, you would know, girl. <laughs> And she's like, you don't get one when you play with yourself. And I'm like, what do you mean play with myself? No I way. I didn't even know what masturbating for women existed. I never even heard of it. And this is after At you 18, had me, right? 19, I was 19 say, years I, old. Okay. This is after I've she already had, that. like, had, and was you know, married. you don't have to have an orgasm to get pregnant and have sex. Yeah, you don't so, have yeah. to. No. So, then so that's that's always felt great. Yeah. But I just didn't know there was going to be this big, there's all of a level. sudden, there's like, level like mind-blowing, like, my eyeballs going to be behind oh. my head. I pulled my eyes rolling back. <laughs> so, so Literally, so my you, body shaking. You talk about, like, you were super close with your mom. Did you have that, like, same relationship with your father? Like, as far as, like, did you, I mean, not talk to, hey, dad, I had sex today, but did, no. was he ever, like, did he ever say, like, did he ever, like, hey, no, I don't never. Know, how, how was he was, it with he was never even act, oh, well, right now, yes, like, I wouldn't even say until this last year because my dad kind of had a health scare that this is the first time we ever, for the most part, have a relationship. Really, like, dug deep on, reached on, like, trauma that was, like, unspeakable that we would never speak about because, like, he, I think, was raised also never communicating anything. And then me, too, like, me with him, I was just, for some reason, always scared by him. I don't know why. I was just, like... He scared me. Like, if he looked at me some way, I'd start crying. Like, <laughs> to this day, probably. But it's just so weird. I think that's like a dad thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, we're raised up that, that way. Yeah. yeah. But, um, so, into the past year, I think we that's when we kind of got close or, like, worked. I feel like this is, like, how our relationship... I'm so happy with our relationship right now. So, before, no, we definitely never had no types of convos or stuff like that. But, um, no, I mean, I don't talk like that. But, like, if something comes up around whatever, like... 
I won't go into as much detail as my mom, obviously, but right. I'm comfortable being like, oh, if I say something light, but I don't want to make my dad uncomfortable either, you know? Yeah. Moms are more open to like, oh, <laughs> we can talk, like girl talk. But guys are like, okay, I want to hear my daughter. <laughs> One yeah. thing I do admire about Jasmine though, just, and I, I even said this, is like, you're so open, you have no filter. Oh, like you 100%. say, you literally, and it doesn't matter if it's even a good time. It could be the wrong time. And you still, 100%. And no, still, 100%. And still, you literally, like, I wish I was like you because I'm Me not too. like no. I really wish, like, that is, a, that is definitely one trait that I do admire about you because you say, like, it doesn't matter if it's the right time, the wrong, you, if it's on your mind, you're going to say it and you're going to let it be known. And I, and I think that's like so <laughs> beautiful you. about you because you literally have no filter. It doesn't matter. Zero. Like, Thank you. I, I witnessed like the funny yeah, I know. things where I'm like, oh, you probably shouldn't have said that right <laughs> no, now, but no. it's fine. Yeah. But I'm always like, oh, I love that you guys love that, but like I found myself like later on that day, the next day being like, should I have said that? And then I'm like, oh well. <laughs> Well, what's that is said? I'm like, I don't know. It's how you feel it. It's what yeah. you think. And more people should be more spoken. Like, yeah. like we, you know, like we're so just like, know. Um, I'm just not going to say it. But you, if you want, if you think it, you're going to say like, it. Because in all matter. reality, it's, I, I'm speaking the actual truth True. that I'm feeling. So I'm not like bullshitting or lying. Yeah. But then I'm like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't have. But I'm like, well, well, that's just how I am. Either if you take it the wrong way, my bad. Yeah. But, but it's, I said yeah. what I said and yeah. I meant it. No, uh, no I, 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 think, it. I think for the most part that like I've gotten to know you, um, you don't really say things to like be malicious and i think that's yes, what it is it's like yes. you don't have a, a not not that you don't get jealous but you don't have a i don't get that vibe of like oh i'm gonna fucking say some shit to make you upset yes. exactly. it's more no. like comes from like a genuine place like mm-hmm. oh Inquisitive. you should probably do this yes. or hey why don't you yeah. do this so i think that's why like when you talk yeah i listen i don't take anything you say you okay, know good. in a negative See, thank way you. <laughs> yeah because you come from a, a good place yeah. and anybody yeah. who does take a negative that's just their own like issues within themselves you yeah, know what i mean that's all yeah because i've like some people can take it the wrong way where they've been like what like what are you talking about girl like why are you asking that? and i'm like oh i'm like i'm just asking seriously you're then just they're asking coming at me, i'm like oh what I'm like, my bad like i was just like like it's literally just me being me and that's what she has to tell people like that since you were little she yeah. was saying uh, listen, she was like <laughs> four years old i'd be like don't why would you say that right now stop jasmine she's like but it's true and oh like, my god you know what's it's funny true, is my daughter does that too can't say that yeah <laughs> My and she just like never that. stopped yeah. and I was like and now I'm glad that she didn't because like I think everyone should be who they are right and there, it, what, what is right or wrong oh, that's then true. she says is we, it, we were taught that, is, that like that's not okay is to wrong. say or, like she, everything she is saying to people yeah. are things that are the truth, the truth that people probably want to maybe not be known but it is what it is like either if it's going to offend you it's because you haven't done the inner work on your own um, that's important uh, what you're saying right now exactly you know what I mean mm-hmm. and if she just calls it out front like no. she's calling what she sees period yeah. you know and she never means it offensive she'll just be like well maybe you shouldn't be having an affair with your Something man's best friend or with someone you know like, <laughs> like random things should no, just not, be like but, but, yeah, but you guys, just, but. yeah and that's the thing and if anyone gets angry at that that's their own inner mm-hmm. issues that they need to now start dealing with dishonesties mm-hmm. yeah I, I think it goes back to like like you were talking about how people are like why does everyone like you I think it's because you don't feel anything you've done like you've come to peace with everything you've done and yeah. I think that's like a superpower for people mm-hmm. like when you hold something in or, or you feel ashamed of something that's more of a you thing shame and guilt will yeah. Yeah, kill you go, yep. mm-hmm. and for then, me I'll go back to drugs drug yeah. addiction Wait, I can't I have to use do that I'm sorry go go. I know this is pre-recorded so sorry <laughs> we're keeping yes, that in by the way <laughs> keep going <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, so I think the biggest thing is like people that have come to terms with, and I don't want to say we all make mistakes, but owning up to them and being okay and, and accepting them in your life, right? And now you feel comfortable with it. So if someone comes at you and be like, oh, you used to do drugs, like, yeah, I, I did. Yeah. yeah. And you 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 are one person who's actually dealt with all of your traumas. And yeah. it, do you feel like that's what led you to now this new chapter in your life of like coaching and things like that? Oh, 100%. And that's why you're talking about how you had the the reader on, and she said, "Well, I can't drink because my gifts." Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm so 71 days sober. Nice, congratulations! And right now, I felt it just it's it's like just spirit literally told me this year, like there's a few things in my life, like where were the energy leaks, mm-hmm. right? Because I knew like in order for me to be worldwide, like in t- in a conference room, let's just say you like be present you know 1,500 people. Like, how can I hold that much capacity or energy? You know, like, like, like my own energy used to be pristine and crystallized. Like, I can't walk in there with, Divine. like, half-assing it, unprofessional, right. hungover, you know, or even have, like, like, it's the clear-mindedness that spirit 
which is God or higher source, whatever you want to call it, yeah. our ancestors, like all the messages come in on a clear mind. So for me to be under the influence, it it it's called spirits for a reason and not the right spirits come in. It does say that even depending on whatever your religion is, but even in the Bible, it does talk about having a sober mind because mm-hmm. when you're, when you're sober, um, that's when you're no, and, able to receive. And the last 71 days, like yeah. I've literally had, I mean, I'm literally like the, that little photo when you see with the third eye, yeah. Yeah. the third eye, like I see things, people don't even have to say a word to me and I'm already getting complete visions of this person and I'm seeing a whole like a whole like like a flip I can see a whole flick of everything that's going on in their life mm. and that's when I could literally be like is this going on for you right now and the people are like what the fuck it's just something it's a gift yeah and now that I'm in it a hundred percent and I'm when programs coming out I'm trying like and God's literally was just like that last little energy leak I like God was like we can't get you here until you it was until like your you, cleanup. You, you, you have to be what you're preaching. Mm-hmm. So even that little energy leak was keeping me from the, 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 like that really true alchemist, like yeah. alchemized level of where like the altruistic area, like I just needed that little area. So now I'm a clear channel. Like there's nothing blocking me. There's no hangover. There's no guilt. There's no shame. Yeah. I don't have a headache. I'm not lying in bed. Like even like one, one drink for me would get me like, oh, like, like, it was a heaviness versus like it was fun at one point. There was just this heaviness. And now yeah. I'm like, God, like now I'm not going to get this done today and I'm not going to get that done. And, and for me, like to come through with these like messages of God, prophecy, like it just it wasn't happening when I was under the influence, period. Yeah. And right now, like I want to say like, every, like all these messages are coming in so clear, like visions for people, vision of the future of this world, visions for myself are so crystal clear Mm -hmm. and I was just like wow like I didn't even know like I I knew I had a gift because I was a little girl but I'd never fully engulfed it or stepped into it and then I've been stepping into it and I feel like right now like I'm full force in it like I see I'm like I see everything and these are things that I'm like I'm like I've never had such clear visions yeah it's like I'm literally seeing people's like every thought they're having like pop up in their head and I'm like, oh, 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 like everything. And I wow. see things for other people, you know, like I'll, I'll text them and be like, oh, you know, like I literally I, like the other day, like there was something on social media I saw and I, I literally saw something and I well, don't say them. <laughs> so I text my friend and she was like, what? And then she, she's like, OK, well, you were right. And I was like, I saw a <laughs> I was clear, about to tell you too, a I'll tell you super right. like everything's so clear right now. And. So I'm so staying sober is a hundred percent part of my path yeah. for the next for the rest of my life. So so kind of tell everybody um, that's not kind of aware of what you offer, uh, what your services entail, and kind of like what your demographic is for your oh. services. Hi, I'm Bien <laughs> Munoz. <laughs> um, I am a mentor and I'm a life coach for women, and men want to join me. They're more than welcome to join me, and I help support them to create a life that they absolutely love. I help them to to get to their wildest dreams. Like everything that you think is impossible, like the wildest dreams, like when, like if people would be like, oh, that would be wild to own a $5 million home. Why is that wild? Right. The person that, that owns that $5 million home, it's normal. Yeah. So everything is like really shifting into like the impossible as possible. And, and so, that's what I do for a living. <laughs> do, 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 do you think a lot of the clients you deal with when they when they have that shift, a lot of it is just like, um, I guess, uh, what is what's the word I'm looking for? Confidence in themselves to be able to do that. So like, I mean, even for me, I think now that I've seen so many people with million dollar homes or people that are rich, it doesn't seem like unattainable. It's like, oh, if you do X, Y, Z there. Mm-hmm. So is your coaching really entail like break it down spiritually first or do you break down what they do day to day first? Uh, and well, yeah. Well, everything's mindset. Okay. Correct. Yeah. So first, we got to start with. There's always limiting beliefs. Mm-hmm. So like somebody that be like, like I don't know. Like, have you ever thought of owning a five million dollar home? I I don't even think about homes. <laughs> okay. So so see so, so there. I think about traveling the world at the moment. Yeah. So so like everyone's is different. Yeah. So I get it. So every everyone I coach is different. Like different there's, place, there's not huh? like one yeah. perfect thing. But it's like I just say like okay like. If, if she was to be like, okay, like I want to go to my next level, maybe she doesn't know what that is. Yeah. So True. then I get to walk by her side and I just get to ask questions. Like guys. And then at some point, 
you know, we, we, and then from there, I'm going to tell her, this is what I love to do now. It's my new thing is, okay, like Amaris from 10 years from now, from 20 years from now, like close your eyes. I want you to picture Amaris in 20 years from now. What would that person, I go, mind you, all the most wild is you're living everything you've ever, what that right now is on your vision board or your, like your vision mm-hmm. list. You have it all. What would that person tell you That's today? Good. What knowledge would they give you? I go, so what we're going to do during our time together, whether it's four weeks, 12 weeks, you know, three months, six months or a year, we're going to call that person in to whisper into your soul everything you need from this time for the next six weeks that we're together. So anything intuitively you get, any weird nudges or coincidences, we're going to take that as your spirit is guiding you what you need to do next. You know, I, or I could say higher power. Mm-hmm. I could say God. Mm-hmm. There's so many words, but I feel like that could be like some people are super religious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or be like, well, why, why does that have to be God? Like, so my thing is, how about we just take who you were tw- 20 years from now? Yeah. And we're going to ask you in 20 years from now to tell you, you know, when like, let's say like, uh, well, I'm 46. So me at 66 years old, well, would, well, I have everything, the $5 million home. I'm traveling the world, like at these conventions. I'm on Forbes magazine as, you know, saving lives or saving souls or whatever it is known as. What would I be telling myself right now at 46 who's just got into it? I love that. Like, no, what yeah. would I be telling myself? Yeah. Well, I need a coach. No, I mean, I mean, <laughs> no. and that's what a coach is for. Get, that, that's what I meant. Like at the gym, you'll, you'll get a little mini coaching session right now. Don't worry. No, I, I'm waiting. I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I'm waiting. No, it's bring it up. true because <laughs> I'm like at the gym. Like, how am I gonna go to the gym and ask for like muscles when I've oh, never yeah. done it? Yeah, that's why you hire and you. What do they do? And they push you when you're uncomfortable. Yeah, right. And they take you out of your comfort zone. Mm-hmm. What's part. your edge? They're like, okay. No, do two more reps. I can't. I got you. I'm going to support you. When she puts right? it that way in gym terms, it makes no, sense. No, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, okay, you're, you're struggling, and they're just lightly tapping it. Come on, keep going, keep going. Mm-hmm. Push, push, push. And they're like, shh. Okay, good, you got it. One more. And you're like, oh, fuck, shh. And they're like, shh. And that just also goes into, into like, our brains, right? Our brains are so mm-hmm. powerful. So our bodies can take anything really it's yeah. our yeah. brains telling us we can't mm-hmm. do it so then you can't do it if you but think you like can, you can our so like our brains are telling our bodies we can't do it but mm-hmm. really if you were able to tap into that other side of the brain and be yeah. like no you can you can do it it's not gonna oh, kill your 100%. body we're made to yeah push. we're made to to do those and that's things. the gift that i've been giving to the little girl so yeah. now it's like putting that together and then what i've been in the i've have eight years now of different programs, quantum physics and life coaching and transformational training, experiential training, like yeah. everything, trauma work, childhood, tra- like I've got every certification available. So now it's like, I'm already at my highest level. So now it's like putting that all into a program where now I can offer what I, what I do so well. And I love, yeah. that's and you, what and I you know, do. The, the thing I think people would benefit the most from you, um, especially you, because your life experience is just that, your life experience, right? Like when I look at professors and when I went to college and I had people that would teach me, and even now, like I hear people that have podcasts or, and they talk about like inspiration and, and oh, you got to go after your dreams. I'm like, you work a nine to five. Like I guarantee, <laughs> I guarantee you didn't think in your life like, oh, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to kill this nine to five. You wanted yeah. the million dollar yeah. homes. And you know, I mean, for the most part, people that have nine to fives, you're not going to attain that million dollar home. Yeah. It's streams of revenue. So uh, like for me, if I'm looking for a coach, I'm looking for someone that's actually been there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So for, for anyone at any age, like you just said, is going to come to you for whatever reason, whatever place you are in your life, you're going to help them take you to the next. Yeah. And if it's somebody, let's just say a female that's young and is ashamed of a lot of stuff they did, who better to go to than you yeah. because mm-hmm. you, you've lived it. You can be like, girl, mm-hmm. like if someone comes to you like, hey, look, at, I do want to be really big in porn, but I want to do this. Yeah. You could literally guide them yeah. or, or, or yeah. take it in any yeah. direction. Yeah. So I feel like you have a huge advantage because you've lived you've so much. You've yeah. experienced. You know, but you've also, you're at a comfortable spot with it where you're like, I don't want to talk about that. Even even when I first asked you to be on, you're the one that like, oh yeah, I did, I did porn. Let's, let's, let's kind of talk about yeah. that. And I was like, I, I don't want to take it there, but you know, because I don't know how you are with it. Yeah. Yeah. But you're the most open person. So I feel yeah. like the coaching suits you so well yeah. because you're non judgmental. There's nothing you can't say that I haven't done, right? You're right. like, I've done it all. I've done more than you have. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so I feel like I can open up and there's nothing I can be embarrassed about. So yeah. like life coaching, like like you said, it doesn't matter. Everyone's at a different place in their life. You want to travel. You may mm -hmm. want to own a yeah, home. Everyone's a different place. So yeah. like anyone can come to you for anything, right? A hundred percent. Like it doesn't and matter it's where. It's literally like yeah. my, my thing, my, my main thing is, uh, you know, I'm here to coach you to exist loudly, unapologetically. Mm. Exist loudly, unapologetically. Like, like what does that feelings. look like? Like, yeah. what does that look like for you? For you to exist loudly, like where are you playing small in your life? You know, and why are you, why are you apologizing? What the fuck? Mm. We don't apologize. Yeah. No, I'm not gonna fucking say and sorry. I think we're just in such a time too right now where everyone makes it seem like it's wrong to be your unapologetic self. Like, yeah. like they like you're wrong for that. Like mm -hmm. if you if you do this, like that's wrong. Everyone sees everything is wrong, and they're so like sensitive to everything mm -hmm. and every little thing that you so now more people are being like so like sheltered or afraid to speak what they want yeah. or do those things because it's like also everyone's so quick to hit that cancel button too you know what i mean <laughs> oh, like seriously it's it's but you know what that that's okay if yeah. somebody that has a stick up their ass wants to cancel me cancel the yeah. fuck out of me guess what you're not part of my program you're yeah, not part or of like soul i'm not tribe. called to be your coach yeah like, like, I'm not everyone's cup of tea. Mm -hmm. like, and I think that's, that's just, that's so important what you say. It's like, if you don't like what somebody says, if you don't like, then just don't listen. Turn yeah. your head. Go this way. Literally. You don't have to, like, yeah, <laughs> like, block me. Just do whatever you got to do. You don't have to be there. But so many people just now, they, they feel like they have to let it be known. Like, I don't like this person. Mm -hmm. I don't like what you say. Da -da -da. Just because I disagree with you or I think differently makes me a bad person or mm -hmm. wrong. No, we have different views. I'm not for you. Turn that yeah, way. Like, it's totally. fine. Shocking. Yeah. No. I'm, I'm going to pour I, another shot because totally. we're going to get into uh, Amherst. No, so we're, not. Like we're not going to get into me. <laughs> okay, as, okay, so it's like, it'll be as it's guided as, as much as you feel comfortable with. So you, whenever, whatever comes up. But the, I think the biggest know. thing is uh, I didn't know that you were like you're a relationship person know, it, and it you were engaged right. before. So this is all new to me. Uh huh. So like now that we have the life coach here, and you oh, said like you're coach. you said you're a relationship oh, person, I kind of want to get into like that. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't think we're a re like relationship thing is anything that's like. Um, so okay, so I don't think I don't think speaking of like we're like it's not like a an issue or. It's not anything that's like a okay, big so thing. Okay, so you in literally my life right sound now. exactly like my mom's first round of coaching, how okay. I sounded. <laughs> All the other girls sounded like we're always like, well, I'm not like that. I don't have that problem. <laughs> and and it, and it's not that. And we all still are different. But like, she, whatever happens is like she's. It's not like exposing secrets or privacy. It's basically leading you to answer your own questions. So however it goes, like no. What yeah. I, what I'm what I'm saying is is I don't think like my main focus right now in my life is like trying to um find the perfect relationship does that make sense for a long time actually okay for a long time i think that was on my mind like even things what i realize now because now i'm i feel like i'm getting to a point in my life where i'm starting to there was like the shift right like i was a makeup artist for so long and then i was just kind of doing things and i was like i don't we had this conversation yeah. when i first came on and then i kind of i finally figured out like what I want to do, where I want to go. And I finally mm -hmm. started seeing the vision. Does that make sense? But for so long, I think I was so focused on like when I would like manifest things or, or, you know, just anything like that. It was always just like love, love, love. And you know what I mean? And it's like, I, that's, that's not really, that shouldn't be the center of my life, honestly, because that's going to come. And like when it does, so I, I finally. Can I ask a question? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, you, you have okay. to so since you were seeking love, then what is what? If you were seeking it, does that mean you were lacking it? Um, Back when you were. No, I'm like a I'm like a super like loving person. No, no oh. not giving love. Oh, lacking it. I think. Well, maybe. I don't know. What but, is it? Okay. What what is what does it feel like when you feel love? That's a question. I what love does it feel question. like when I feel love? So I right now you question. said you said today you're not searching comfort, for it. it. Comfort, like it just feels it's right? it's it's comfort. It's healing. It's like um, yeah. I don't know. I think it's 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 comfort and healing and fulfilling in a sense. You know, it's like. But also, I think another thing too is like when my dad passed away, there was like a hole. And so that was another way of trying to get it filled, you know? Mm -hmm. But also growing up too, my mom told us a lot. Like she, when she grew up, her mom wasn't very vocal about love or like yeah. telling them. So we didn't grow up with like 
we lo I love you, I love you all of the time. Now my mom says it all the time, but growing up we did it. So I think maybe that, like in a sense, but like I said, I think I entered a, a point in my life now where like I've realized all of these things. Because again, with like dealing with your traumas and like going back to like where it could have stemmed from, like I worked a lot on that, you know? So I think now my focus is like, I'm not, I was too focused on that, which is why I think it was never like, because it was for, you felt like forced. Um, I don't know. And it's not about. I mean, even if it is, like, I think we've it all been be in a relationship forced, where we're forced, or it just right? Could be like I would, I would settle. Is my issue. Uh, I would settle, and I always knew like what I wanted, but I'd be like, eh, it's fine because like, oh, this is love. But like, what is it? You know what I mean? Like, what is that? Or if it felt like it in the moment, and then later on when it would end, I'd be like, oh no, that like that wasn't love. It wasn't. So like, 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 Mama D was talking about like in five years. Do you see yourself like married, kids? all that stuff or like what's your what's I your I do but I thought about that when I was younger I was like by the time I'm 30 I'm gonna but I always held myself like this is what I need to do this is my so now I think now my main focus is just like me feeling fulfilled and successful and like me getting everything that I want like for myself you know mm -hmm. what I mean and just doing what I gotta do for myself and if I am married in five years and I do have children then like great but like that'll all come I think my main focus is just like at this point is just being successful for myself, right. you know? Okay, I have a question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna ask you two questions, uh -huh. okay? And I want you to tell me how you feel during both these questions. So first question, when you're unfulfilled, mm -hmm. close your eyes. Okay. Oh. When you're unfulfilled, mm -hmm. what does that feel like? When I'm unfulfilled. In which way? Because you were saying um, that right now you're working on fulfilling yourself and feeling fulfilled so that you don't, you don't, you don't, no, you're no longer seeking love because you're feeling fulfilled. <clears throat> I guess I, maybe I said that wrong because it's like not that I'm not seeking love. I think that like love is important in life, obviously. And, and of course, I, I, I do want that like, you know, that relationship obviously um that perfect relationship but nothing's ever perfect but um i think for me is just is i i for so long i think that i held myself back from a lot of different things um whether it be like <clears throat> makeup or all of my career like past i've i've held myself back and that's just because it's like and when you held yourself back, did you feel fulfilled or unfulfilled? Later on, I felt unfulfilled. But, but a couple of things that have held me back were those relationships, right? So it was like, <clears throat> or past relationships that I've been in. And they were fulfilling or unfulfilling? Well, I feel like they became unfulfilling because they ended, you know? But in the moment, I think you were kind of like blind in a sense. Um, and so it held me back from doing things that I wanted to do because it was like, I was so stuck here. Okay. If that makes sense. Oh, no, no, no. I, I'm hearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm hearing it um, clearly. And then when those relationships would end, I would look back and be like, I wasted so much time focusing on this, like, relationship that should have just been so easy and so, like, everything, you know, came organically, but I spent so much time here that, like, I lost focus here. So I always continued to lose focus of myself and, like, getting to the places that I should have been or where I needed to be because I was so focused here. Does that make sense? A hundred percent. Yeah. And so like, and I, and I realized like, even when it comes to like manifesting my future and my life and seeing things, it was like, even on vision boards, I was like, why is it so many, like, instead of it being goals, like future goals for like your success and your business and all of these things, there was a lot of love in there. And I would notice that it would be like, you know, and I'm in relationship okay. stuff and I'm, and it's not like that in mm. this chapter okay i see okay and because i've kind of pushed that aside because i realized like that's not it wasn't it i shouldn't have been focused on that does that make sense so, and i've realized that and i've I seen it, it and so now with this new like phase that i'm entering and like pushing it's okay, completely can, different. Can we, we stay real quick mm -hmm. where where you're talking about these relationships mm -hmm. and at the beginning you're saying there was love, mm -hmm. and at the beginning, there wasn't. And you were saying there were the wrong ones. Like, they didn't work out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I want you to stay in that, in that, we're going to stay in that little story okay. right now, okay? In that energy, because you're kind of jumping all over, and I'm trying to stay there, because Yeah, I know you are, and I'm trying to get away from it. Yeah, I know. Oh, <laughs> oh you're running. You're running. I was like, let's go there. <laughs> I was like, this 
supposed to be about me and we're not supposed to be about me. See, I have the advantage of we did kind of this a little bit, so I already know. I'm just going to let it slide through. Go ahead. Okay, so everyone desires love. It's a beautiful feeling. It's a beautiful thing. And and I'm hearing like... It sounds the same way as last time almost, huh? At the beginning of the relationships, it was there. And you had that 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 qu- that the, the quick high of their loving you mm-hmm. right and then when that no longer was fulfilling you started feeling unfulfilled mm-hmm. so if you're if you're feeling unfulfilled what is that a lack of what's no longer there you're not feeling love okay so is it another person's job to make us feel loved? No, that's the, th- no, it's okay. not. It's, Wh- whose job is it? It's mine. Okay, and when you feel loved, when you love yourself, how does that feel? Great. Because I, oh, okay, hold on, hold on, <laughs> slow down, <laughs> hold on. Because I do love okay. myself. Hold, uh, hold on. Okay. So, <laughs> trust the process. In the, so, when you were in these relationships, right, you said. They took the love away from myself, to be honest. Okay, hold on. They took it or you gave it? I let them take the love away from me. No, myself. so they took it or you gave I it? I gave it. Okay. How does that feel when you say that? Say it again. I gave them my love. Okay, say it again. I gave them my love. Okay, how does that make you feel? It doesn't make me feel like... Um, it doesn't make me feel bad because I know like I'm a loving person. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I think that my, like I said, it goes back to my issue, is that it took, so I, I think a lot of the relationships that I was in as well, it's like they, they meet me and then like, okay, hold on, hold on, wait, wait, they, wait. Love, they, they, they meet me and then they see this person, right? Like they, they fall in love with my personality, who I am or whatever. And then when they have to deal with it, they try to take that like what the beautiful parts about me away from me. Does that make sense? And like to make me feel wrong for being the way that I am. And I let it happen though. And then so it's almost like I feel happier when I'm out of the relationship, out of those ones. That's how, it, that's how, it, that's how it's been. So once those relationships have ended and I'm by myself, I'm, I do love myself again and I am happy with myself. Okay, so, okay, so let's, not, let's stay in that energy. Okay. I need that amorous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> say that again? So when I've came out of those relationships, uh-huh. um, I am happy with myself and I okay. do love myself. Say the, those last two lines. <laughs> I am happy with myself and I do love myself. Say it again. <laughs> I am happy with myself and I do love myself. Say it one more time. I am happy with myself and I love myself. Okay, now look me in the eye and I want you to say it slow. Okay. I am happy with myself and I love myself. How does that feel? It feels great. Where do you feel it in your body when you say that? All over. And like, what is, what is, give me more descriptions of what that felt like. Well, okay, so I've been saying this a lot to myself, too, though. So I think it's like, it comes, I, I have it on my refrigerator, like all my daily affirmations. So I do say it to myself a lot, and I've been saying it every day, so I feel like it feels comfortable to say right now, just because I've been saying it so much. Okay, so. And I feel it, and I honestly okay, yeah, I feel okay, it. Okay, so we're talking about feelings, yeah, yeah, yeah. not and what I you wrote it. on the board. And I, and I feel it. Okay. So, so when I say it, I, I actually genuinely feel it. Okay, so what were you feeling again when you said those? Say it again to me. Look at me. Oh, sorry. Oh, say what I just <laughs> said to you? I'm like, what oh am I God. saying? I'm I lost my train yeah. of thought. Um, I am happy with myself, and I love myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How does it feel when you say that? Like, how does it feel inside? It's uncomfortable to say. Okay. But it feels good. Okay. Not but. Mm. It but, feels good. But is this but is <clears throat> depowering the eye... I, how does it, okay, close your eyes, okay. and I want you to say, I love me. I love me. I, I value, value me. me. I, I come, come first. first. Love, love is, is my, my language. language. I, I come, come first. first. My love, my love is mine. Is mine. It will always. It will always be mine. Be mine. No one. No one 
can take that from can me. Take that from me. It's mine. It's mine. How does that feel? Well, it feels in, a little embarrassing because no <laughs> <laughs> oh. There we go. You're disconnecting. But yeah. I, but, yeah. You're disconnecting. I know, I'm, I'm, I, but, but no, it, no, it, it does feel... I get it. Look at me. Look at me. It's so weird. Yeah. Look at me. And, and I'm just, like a very... Like I said, I'm a very private yeah. person. So this already is like so weird to me. Um, but no, it, no, it feels good. It feels good. And it feels great. And it's, it's, it's something that I need, like for sure. And I know that. But it does. It feels good. Okay, so what, what I'm hearing is when, when we say, when we say, well, this person took love from us, nobody could take love. You know why? Love is a feeling. Yeah. So when we love ourselves, mm -hmm. it's never gone. Yeah. I could, no matter who I ever date, I'm going to always feel love because I love me. Mm -hmm. I don't need that person's love. They could take it away. They could shove it up their ass. They could choke <laughs> on it. Guess what? Sam I'm it. still <laughs> going to feel loved. Yeah. So what happens is when you get into your, your when you, like you, I'm hearing you saying, I went from relationship to relationship and it always started out loving, but then I, then I wouldn't feel loved anymore. You never felt love because you never loved yourself mm -hmm. and you were depending on someone to give it to you. And people can only love you so much until you start sucking them dry of their own love for themselves that people are going to start backing off because people don't want to be the source of someone else's love. Yeah. And I think, well, the thing with me is what I've realized in relationships too is like which, with my past is that I, even with like, I, um, I'm kind of easy going in a sense. I'm a brat and I'm stubborn and I like to have my way. Like that's, I, I think most girls kind of are, you know, <laughs> we're like that. Um, you Check. already sound like, just from everything that she's been replying to your questions when I first, but, yeah, you yeah, sound yeah. like me when I was first starting and, with you. <laughs> I am so defensive. I'm like, what is it? You no, know well, what I'm it was though is I gave so like much me. freedom at the same time too. So it wasn't <laughs> like they just stopped like, I gave so much but freedom. Hold on, hold on. And, and I'm not. I'm not hearing freedom when you're making me the source cause I think, of, I think what I, of I your think love. I, yeah, but I don't think that I made them the source ca cause of my love. I think maybe no, I, wait, hold I, on. Phrased, wait, I rephrased wait. that wrong. So, but what I, what I'm wait. What, 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 what I'm saying not, is, she's feeling really really defensive. I know. <laughs> what I'm it's saying not is, about uh, about what you're thinking. Yeah, I'm letting you know. Yeah, you you're making them. They're they they're, they're your freedom is not. I know what you're saying. Your freedom is not making someone like you're. You're. You're the only reason I feel loved. And when you stop behaving a certain way, I stop feeling loved. So now I don't feel loved. Well, I started feeling freedom. loved because it was like I got betrayed, like cheated on, stuff like that. So it wasn't like the relationship. Like I was like making them want to love. Like it was great. A lot of my relationships were good, but I think that I got. They were also doing things behind my back, and that's how a lot of them ended. Okay, well, I mean, well that's, yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. normal relationship. Yeah, so, so that's what I'm saying. So it wasn't like I, I, it, the relationships were always like so good, and then, and I would think it was great, and so it would just be like fine, and then I would find out that it wasn't. Does that make sense? Like because of, of like course. the things they were doing, um, or that they have done, or the way that they've treated me, whether it's like verbal abuse or like abusive relationships right. and things like that so then that's what kind of like got me to the place of like not feeling loved because of that a betrayal okay and, like, well but, but and abuse betrayal and those versus yeah. not feeling lovers two different yeah, contexts I, I think i just maybe said it wrong in the beginning because it wasn't like oh i'm in this relationship because i'm not that, feeling right that comes with betrayal means yeah they don't love you. Right, 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 right. And so then eventually that's how I felt. So, but that's why I say in the beginning it was always so good. And then later on I would see what it really was. And so then it would be like, oh, okay. Like the betrayal. And then again, I was in like very um, verbal abusive relationships and like and you, physical you relationships. And you stayed when these things happened? Um, when I was younger, the first time, yes. Okay. Yeah. And so then that's why yeah. like when I hopped into a next relationship, it was like, trying to like run from that one and then it was it, but that's why I said I really had to deal with like my trauma from the first relationship which I never dealt with because I was always trying to run from it to really see like what it was and that's kind of do what you broke me. do you see what your part was in that oh I do well what first was of all it? it was just sticking around and dealing with it and tolerating Correct, yes it. that's 
that was completely 100% my issue. Yeah. Is like, and I think that's a lot of our problems is we stay places that we know we're not supposed to be in. And then we're only doing damage to ourselves. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I left that part let, let, let I me, left let that me, part let me ask of you. Like why I felt that way. So it wasn't like I was like begging them for love or begging them for this or begging them for oh. that. It was more so just because I ended the relationship not feeling that way because of like how I was treated and betrayed and those things. Right. Yeah. It's it's interesting the your interpretation. Yeah. Because your interpretation at the beginning was, oh, they gave love and then they stopped. I know. I didn't want to like go into detail of what it was about. I try to like, again, I'm a very private person. Cause, cause like, it never was they stopped. It was you. They just you, never let me to begin with. You just yeah. met somebody that yeah. just wasn't. Yeah, but committed the, to the relationship that wasn't meant to be in exactly. And again, I just didn't want to bring in like go into depth of like but the, the emotional, the physical, abuse or the verbal abuse and all those things. I just don't want to talk about. The, but the, that's the ver- why was yeah. the verbal abuse though hand in hand with the cheating, or was just separate on your in your own relationship? Right. Uh, the first relationship that I was talking about was just like all over just a disaster. Just, oh, the only reason I say that is because like sometimes, or at least with my relationship right now with London coaching wise, when I was with her, is that um, sometimes I'd be like. I don't know I wasn't like it's not extreme verbal abuse but I'd say something like this and that like maybe like we were a little we'll be mean we're, would be mean sometimes and I don't, I don't think we fix it all the way still but she would be like so when I would tell her about it like with verbal abuse I guess you could still kind of say not like too crazy but she'd be like verbal okay. abuse is verbal abuse there's no, no, no diminishing not right, no because right. we're not like cussing each other oh, out no, see, like fuck you that, you're not good enough no one's gonna but want you you're like a piece of shit being mean towards yeah. your partner like right. sometimes you're like oh like passive aggressive or mean right. so I bring that up and she'd be like well well what are like she just asked me like well what like I'm curious like how, you remember you used to coach me like what would mm-hmm. be like what are you telling him or and it's nobody's fault but I'd be like why well, say this? And she's like, well, how do you, if, or if I'm being angry and I'll be like, mm-hmm. we'll do this because you don't fucking blah, blah, blah. She's like, so how do you expect, expect him to react? And I'm like, well, just do what I fucking said. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, like sometimes I do like that. And she's like, well, then obviously like, and future, even after we get over that moment, she's like, the next couple of times that come, he's going to learn from you and he's going to come at you how you come at him. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't even know it. Yeah. And like, it's always just like a bullet. Like, and then like, you, she's like, you don't even know it, but he's literally acting how you act Mirroring. toward him. Like he's yeah. literally a mirror reflection a mirror of, of you, you and you're mad because he's doing what you're doing. She's like, so then when I was actually act stayed in the program with her, like I saw a huge difference where I was like, okay, I'm like, well, let me just like change it up. Cause nobody said this. And like, there was a huge difference where it's just like, if you come from like a, you can, you can, um, basically say what you want to be changed but you don't have to be so angry about it type of thing yeah and yeah. I did and I did um there was like a few of like the podcasts and stuff that I've I've listened to do talk about that like if they're this way with you or they're treating you like this way like you have to take a look at yourself yeah. and be like well yes. what am I doing yep. to make them yep. act that way or like what can I change to maybe change the narrative of the whole mm-hmm. situation yeah. um and like the way that you react and and all of those things so I do agree with that because no matter what, it's just human nature, right? The energy that you give off is the energy yep. that you're going to, yep. you're going to well, receive. It, I so. mean, it, it's crazy because, uh, when I first met my wife, like my parents, they fought a lot, like verbal, like very verbal, like you're, you're so-and-so. And so like every relationship I've had, it was very normal for me to be mad. at she be like, you're such a stupid bitch. And she'd be like, you're a fucking idiot. Right. It was very normal. Yeah. yeah. Right. It was like, okay, we did it. We're good. Let's move on in the next day. But when I got with my wife, I remember the first time she did something and I was like, you're such a fucking bitch. <laughs> she walked out. And she, I was like, where's she going? But I was used to fighting. Say, like, okay, yeah, this is yeah. the game. Let me go. She's yeah. gonna, she's gonna be outside already, crying, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I'm gonna be like, I'm sorry. She literally took off, and I was like, what oh, the shit. fuck? And then she didn't talk to me for like a month. So I had to like go back to her, like, hey, are we good? Or like, she goes, no. Yeah. Like never, ever, ever use that word. Even if I like play around to this day, oh, like yeah, when yeah. we fight, there it's zero. Like, oh, Christy, you're yeah. stupid. You, and even you're stupid. Anything. It's 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 not even like that because. She trained me out of, like, literally when we first started dating, like, I won't tolerate that. And even a couple times, I'm like, oh, my God, why are you acting like such a... I hate even and someone I, and even I, saying, why are you acting like yes. a bitch? Because you're still <laughs> so she'd be like, Yeah, that's what she says. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm almost like, get to the line, but I'm like, when I get frustrated. So we both learned that, like, there's th- things that trigger me that she does. And I know, like, if I really wanted to get at her, I can do that. But we learned that at early in our relationship, kind of like how you and Linda are doing. Mm-hmm. Like, so now it's funny because I look back at, like, prior relationships. And obviously, I married my wife for the reason. But, yeah. like, when we do argue, there's never, 
well, you're a loser. Like you're even like during the hardest times of my life, she never put me down, never mm-hmm. once. And it almost made me like value her more. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. damn, she never like, yeah, even when I feel like I'm a, a piece of shit or like, I shouldn't have done that. She's just like, well, you know, we sit there, but she's never, even in her most angry time at me has ever come at me like with verbal. They know like our most trigger, not even trigger, like our most intimate, like, sensitive points that you know everything about me like i would like hope that you would not dig use at it that. as ammo yeah, yeah. Like, like that is something because i love you as i knew if we fight like you would bring up something else and you right. were like don't ever fucking come there like there's boundaries and stuff like that and see even and, that like it's crazy because like even like don't fucking say that yeah she'll like, be like how would you yeah you don't need to curse yeah, like she's yeah. told me i'm like okay but don't tell me like that because i feel like you're scolding me so she's like hey so the way she changed her verbiage is like hey Mm -hmm. hey i don't like it makes me uncomfortable when you curse yeah then i'll have to be like but if she goes don't do that then that triggers me to want to do it more so we've learned without i mean but now that i talk to you go thing very much so 100 percent. very much so because my both my parents are immigrants so my mom's very used to like the hispanic culture the male my dad's uh chinese uh from hong kong so it's very like the male is the boss kind of thing um obviously they're not like that anymore they're more americanized but i'm always like you're the boss. I'm, I'm the you, boss. You and that. even now in yeah. a relationship, she lets me know, like, you are the boss in the sense where, like, the family is run on you. Like, you, mm-hmm. I do go to her for input, but there's never a time she makes me feel like I'm not. But when we have discussions or we get in arguments, even I said, I'm so fucking irritated. She'd be like, when you say fucking, it makes me, it's going to take this conversation to a place yeah. that, that doesn't need to be. And then I'm like, yeah. all right, you're right, you're right. I shouldn't have said that. I'll literally be yeah. like, I shouldn't have said that. Where before, she used to be like, don't fucking or just not though fucking yeah. don't say that and i'm like yeah, don't yeah, say yeah. what fucking why can't i fucking say fucking <laughs> like you're a child. No. right and it gets yeah. to a place no. i think that's great and i think that's such that's so important and vital in relationships what you just said like as far as like your guys's communication you guys worked through it because a lot of relationships divorces and all of these things they don't stop because people just fall out of love with each other right no. they just stop they're just it kind of goes back to they just stop working for it. They yeah. just give up. They're just not, they don't, they don't want to work for it anymore. They don't want to switch things up or, or hear things about themselves that they may need to change. They're just like, eh, I'll give up. Like, I, why do I have to work for I think for the that? biggest thing is like kind of what you go back to is how you say it. Yeah. And why you deliver it? Why is that that triggering to me? I mean, we're not, trust me, we, we still argue. We're we're not not some perfect couple. So don't, oh, Jason, you're, (laughs) but I mean, we've come from a place where I've come from a place. And I think back, like I used to treat women really bad, to be honest with you. Like I would cheat and I'd be like, I I used you for whatever I did until I started to realize like, fuck, it made me feel one day. I, I'm one day I look back and I was like, why did I do that? Because I had a girl that I did. I mean, I used her for everything I could possibly use her for. And then I had like my own come to Jesus moment where I was in a relationship and I saw her at a party. I said, hey, I just wanted to say sorry. She goes, don't ever talk mm-hmm. to me again. Yeah. I don't want to hear an apology. I never want to see you. I never want to talk to you. I go, no, no, I, I get that. I did yeah. what I did was wrong. She goes, no, 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 you don't understand. You're so dead to me. And I was oh. like, it made me feel like, fuck, I hurt her that bad. Like scum Can of the I, earth. That you know even now, yeah. she like, it was like years later, she doesn't even, so I, it made me reevaluate. You, you like, know what's damn. crazy is, 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 it's funny that you say that because my past relationships or, or the people that I have ended with have yeah. actually came back to me and like have thanked me for the man that they are today. Like one of them, he, he literally like thanked me for the man that he is today. Like everything that he has, his business, like I pushed him, I was there for him, helped me, I helped him see things that he didn't see. And like, so when I think back, like I know we had this thing, I'm, some of us are put into people's lives for like a reason, a season and a of lifetime, course. you know? Mm-hmm. And so, and, and it wasn't just him. It was like another relationship told me the same thing. That's another one like wrote too. me a letter and like thanked me mm-hmm. and I taught that, them how that's valuable. That's a high value I, woman. I, I guess I've got in common. High value women. I taught them women. like how valuable time is and like mm-hmm. how to appreciate things that they used to not see because this was important mm-hmm. and now they see it now. Like I've got a lot of that too. So, so, and again, I do, I, I see where I am wrong in my relationships because I am like a brat and I am needy and I am stubborn, which I've came from, but I, but I have got that like, but, and, and I'm, and I'm accepting of it though. I'm like, you know what? I forgave you. Like, I don't hold anything that you did against me. Like, it's fine. Like shit happens. Like even the like abusive relationships, like i I forgave you. Like you're not that person anymore. Like I can't hold that against you. Like I don't hate you. You know what I mean? And mm. I've learned from it. Like yeah. granted as much as that sucked, like it helped me grow as a person. I've learned from it. I could take what I've learned there and like apply, apply it to it other here. things. Yeah. Yeah. So I, aside from her, she needs to like forgive you for sure. No, I, I, I mean, no, <laughs> like, but, but see now, even now, like even now yeah. speaking of yeah. it, like to this day, like that, that, that moment 
even when I was young, it made me like, wow, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. But like, I mean, she probably doesn't listen to this. She probably has me blocked and everything. But the, <laughs> but the, the thing was, was um, like, she doesn't have to forgive me. I, That's what I was yeah. I, 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 I went, me. I went to For her. I, but, mm-hmm. No, I mean, but I mean, of course, yeah. I would want yeah. her to. I, I would. I mean, now it's so gone. But it was something for me to be like, and I, it was random. It was like, I want to go up to her. I'm just gonna go up to her because I felt some kind of way, and then when I released it, it made me feel that better. But it also in cha- you. Yeah. yes, but it also changed me to be like, damn, I can't keep doing this. Yeah. You know, even though you can, and I think when we when we talk about love, and again, I've been married for God eight years. It's a ever feeling of different cups, mm-hmm. right? So like you said, like you gave your love, but that's important in a relationship. Like you, sometimes I give more love than my wife gives me because she needs it at the time. Mm-hmm. Now it's a point to like, do I take advantage of that and keep? taking and taking and taking and not refilling and there's times where i really needed her to like just be all about me mm-hmm. and my love so i feel like love in general like with a relationship wise it's cups yeah and sometimes you guys are equal yeah. but sometimes they're going through something that you got to fill their cup and it's the person that you're with that knows like okay i don't want to take advantage of all that love you're giving me because you could i could take it and run with it mm-hmm. you know what i mean so i think it's a balance in that but you giving your, but you giving your love i don't think that's a bad thing i think yeah. that's part of a relationship you've probably done that with london but it's but yeah. it's a point to where you're that person that's taking that love knows when to kind of give it back yeah and I feel like in your relationship, some of those people were maybe too young or too selfish or, that's, that's or too, too zoned yeah. in that they weren't tuned in enough to be like, I want to give you some of that love back because that yeah. might have changed the relationship. And that's why I say, again, after like even years later, whatever, they've like apologized or like, you know, like thanked me for, for helping them see things that they didn't see while we were there and things like that. So that's why I don't I don't hold it. But it, it like I said, it helped me grow and it helped yeah. me helped change like my perception of things and, and all of that. It's but. 100% because I feel like I, I do relate to you when you tell your story. And, I, and obviously, I know you personally yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. And you're definitely a light worker. And I feel like a lot of us that are the anointed ones from God, mm-hmm. that we're here as light workers to love. And I f- want to say that one of our biggest lessons through love at the beginning is learning what's not love. Mm-hmm. You know, learning that, okay, well, I want to fix this person. I want to heal them. <laughs> that's my like, problem. <laughs> uh, not until we get older and we've had some relationships do we yeah. learn like, oh, that's not my fucking job. Yep. I can lead the way yep. and I can show you what it feels like to be loved. Mm-hmm. But the minute you, you know, you do anything harmful for me, I'm out the fucking door. Yeah. You know, and for so long, I remember just becoming like this mean bitch for a long time because I was like, everyone just takes advantage of me. But as time gone by and I learned like, wait, though, like love's my superpower. Why do I have to stop being me? So you stop using me. Oh, let me stop dating people that use me period like my job is to heal people now in programs that come to me to do the work not to go into someone's life and think i'm going to be the one to fix them anymore because i'm not i'm I'm literally like you come healed and if you have some issues i want to know you're already working on them yeah and i'll walk by your side but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna tolerate x y and z these are hard no's so same thing like all the relationships like i have some hard motherfucking no's today (laughs) but i but i promise you this when we date you're getting my fucking love. Right. I'm gonna love you. My heart's mm-hmm. on my sleeve until A, B, and C gets done. Yeah. I'm out the door, and then you're gonna call me your karma because losing my presence, <laughs> losing my presence, gonna motherfucking hurt. Yeah. You're, it's gonna you'll, fucking you'll, yeah, hurt. You'll see it later on. Maybe you and won't see gonna it come now, back. And gonna, yeah. And be like, oh my god, you were the one. Yeah, ten years ago, bro. Ten years. Uh. Ago. <laughs> but you know, I, I think that goes to everything. I mean, even like uh, for me as a business owner, like if people leave. I kind of feel like I'm always okay with it because I know, I guess I could say I'm a high value individual. Exactly. Like I know what I bring to the table. Yeah. I know that I genuinely care about every single person that comes in. But at the same time, it has to almost be reciprocated, right? Mm-hmm. Like I can't love you more than you, exactly. you love yourself. Like there has to be in the middle. So like that's why earlier we were kind of talking about like, like you have to figure out what works for you. Like relationships or marriage, I feel like it's a huge, it's like a business decision. Yeah. Right, so like you may need financial security, or maybe you just need love as your security. Like you got to see whoever you're dating is what do you need from them, and it's not selfish, mm-hmm. right? I think you need to understand like what you need moving forward as far as like whatever you see yourself in five years. And like I know some girls that have married for money, but that's part of their, that's what their cup needs to be filled. And maybe they're okay with that, maybe they're not. But I feel like a business decision is. Is that person smart with their money? Is that person as driven as me? And, you know, is that person in debt? Is that person have shitty credit? Yeah. So like when people are like, I'm gonna marry off of just love, I'm like, dude, <laughs> that's the worst case scenario. 
So, you know la- I mean? ladies wise, because I know you're already married. Yes. <laughs> ladies wise, what do you think about like a I forever agree. commitment? Not, yeah. Forever, sorry, forever commitment. But n- do you believe like like nothing about making the government get involved and blah blah blah? But like we just know like rings and stuff. No, not get that marriage married. stuff. I want a big wedding. No. I want no, rings. I know I have a couple <laughs> girlfriends who are like when we are each other's forever partner. Like we can still do the whole thing without like the the. Maybe they could do a ceremony, but like not the. It's not though. Legal work. It's not though. No, but because they say that like that, we shouldn't have to have that. I get it and I understand stuff. that, and I told, and I think that goes to people that That's are. That's not my point of view. No, no, no. I'm just saying. Yeah, so like, yeah. I think that goes to like either uh, the male or female that are financially really stable. And so uh, yes. they're kind of thinking like, oh, I don't want you to touch my money. Like for <laughs> oh, me, no, I mean, but, but you know what? That's, I, I'm, I want that's to okay. Nuptials, honestly, right? Okay. Your, money, your money, your money, my money is my money. Can match her even more. Right, right. Maybe she would. Yeah. Right, but I'm, I'm saying I, I think if people, and this is just my opinion, yeah. so don't come at me. But I feel like people <laughs> that are like, hey, we're like in a, a, a relationship, and we don't need to have marriage, I feel like that, that's a cop out because then at any time I can leave and it could be okay. Yeah, I agree. Basically, you're my girlfriend. It's not yeah. like yeah. It's, it's, you're not my wife because it Even does change. Buy you a ring. It does change yeah. when you're like, hey, this is my wife because there's a lot of things that we have on the line. And I feel like right now with social media, it makes mm. things too easy to have somebody else everything's accessible so so, so e- even now like right i could go online and me and me and ziggy were talking <laughs> about that i said dude is every girl on instagram like gorgeous because <laughs> yeah. you go on the explorer page no, right it's and it's just being called face out <laughs> no face <laughs> face tone <laughs> i just discovered this <gasps> and I'm like, oh, oh my goodness. Wait, but hey so we do have some videos Wait, did you notice all of a sudden all the girls have face lips the same <laughs> that, i was like i asked that's somebody, what i mean I, I literally asked one of my friends he's a photographer and i said okay <laughs> you take photos of very beautiful girls, right? Like everyone's beautiful, like and but like they how do they all look the same? Like do they go to the same doctor? Like like what no. how do they all look so great? And he I goes, did he goes let me show you last year. He goes, let me show you. And then he took oh, a let photo. Me show you. He he took yeah, a photo. It's an app. He's like he it took a app. photo. He took a Edit photo of whole me face. and put it in the app and then sent it to me and I was like <laughs> Hey, Ziggy, we got that up, bro. Like, I was just like, oh my God. Like, everything was just like perfect. And I'm you just look at ev- some people. Everybody. <laughs> no. And it's crazy because now yes. I realize because if you really look at all these girls, they look exactly the same. It's that app. No, and, it, and I'm not I, eating because it looks I beautiful. Did, no, whatever, I did like. that last year and I kept asking everyone around me. I was like, I was texting my girlfriends, like, who we all get plastic surgery. And I was like, bitch, look at someone's yeah. face. She snatched. I'm like, who did she get her face lift from? And she Adobe. was like, I don't know. She's like, maybe it's just an app. And I was like, I have, I have snaps. See, like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I have these apps. I go, I don't have, yeah. like, I don't have no face lift app. And, and I, I swear to God, it was probably like a good eight or nine months. And I kept texting people. And I'm like, the, who you, the fuck You guys is, are getting fooled, okay? No, you guys I, are getting played. I literally played. was like, what mm-hmm. fucking doctor is everyone going to? Right. I'm, I'm like everyone kidding. looks I fucking amazing. Thing. I asked the same and thing. I so funny. A few of the girls I had been asking, now looking back, they were using the app the whole time, and not once did they answer me. Mm-hmm. Damn, mm-hmm. they're trying to like, keep secrets. Like you could have been like, "Hey, girl, let me show you what's up." And I was like, I asked so many no, girls. They were, no, we have time. some girlfriends that will have a group of girls, and they'll like edit only themselves and leave all the girls. Uh, yeah, all I'm natural. Like, oh, you, you edited your face on Facebook. Yeah, girl, but then girl, you left all let everyone. I've had a girl like someone we've all actually be like, I'm the Beyonce of the group. And then she like face tuned herself and everyone else. Yeah. That's I, what it, it's, uh, no, it's not face tune. Um, well, you know what? Face, what, app. face app. Whatever. App. App. Oh, called face oh, app. Yeah. No, and yeah, it no. It literally I've, changes their whole. No, you can change it. your I've hair I've on there. I was like, yeah, no. Does your wife ever be like, oh, edit me a little bit? My no wife shame in that, hates by Instagram. By she hates Instagram. Oh, she doesn't want to be okay. on. So if you ever, I mean, if you get lucky enough to where my wife actually follows you back, but she doesn't check any of her stuff, you're only going to see my birthday or our anniversary, my daughter's birthday. <laughs> I already seen enough. I want to hear stories. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I wrote to you. I was like, yeah. oh my God. No. I'm like, you're going, cake no, going back to and what you said. I like it like said. that. I like it like that. Going back to what you just said about like Instagram, how you said, is every girl on Instagram beautiful? Mm-hmm. Um, there, what podcast was I just listening to? I listened to a lot because I just, um, but it was a, as a man and he was literally saying, that um, back in the day, right? Like just when Instagram didn't exist, maybe not even MySpace, all those things. When a man like loved a woman, like he loved her, it's and like gone. that was when it. If they have five, if they have this, whatever. Woman. Like that's that's his girl. But now it's like you have. Imagine if like social media didn't exist, right? So now you're just like I'm fighting with my girl. I'm gonna go on Instagram, and now exactly this. what I was you trying to talk. Yeah, is better, right? Yeah, or more like, access. Or or, or they were saying like this girl, you're dating this girl, and she has she's ninety percent of everything that you want. 
but she's missing that 10%. And that 10% is like valuable to you. So then you go out and you find this girl who has that 10%. Then you start dating her. Guess what? She's, she's lacking missed, that yeah. 90% of this. And now yeah. you're fucked because you just left what you mm-hmm. what was good. And now she doesn't mm-hmm. want you because you left her for this 10%. So I think that it's true. Men are so easily deceived because I they mean, will bo- have something great. Wait, both. Oh, and women too. And women too. And women too. Do you, too, agree with too. Do you feel like your, so your wife is lacking 10% of something? No. Just no. Yeah, yeah. No. no. This is just what it was just saying. No, like they were I, I just mean, giving an oh, example. Oh, okay. Just giving an example of like there's mm-hmm. some men out there and they or women out there who use Instagram because everything is so accessible. So then they try to find something new. Right. 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 So, so, so I, let, let me give you an example of like what I mean by like uh, what you look for. Right. So when I when I looked for a wife, I looked for a business partner first and foremost. Yeah. Even at a young age, I knew like I need someone that I can sit down and talk business with. I don't need you to cook. I don't need you to clean. Um, my non-negotiables when I was young was you have to be um, business savvy in the sense where you're ambitious, but you also have to be a good mom somewhere down the line for me. And that's a thing that you just feel like you meet some women, you're like, damn, you're going to make a great mom. And that's how I felt about my wife. Right. So like I have some friends that are like, their wives are awesome fucking cooks. They can bake. They, I don't need that in my life. So some people are like, oh, my wife don't clean the house. We <laughs> have someone that cleans our house. Yeah. We even have a service sometimes we use. Yeah. My wife's going to oh, be mad because yeah. I said this. You found that, ways around. No, to that, like, that, yeah, that, yeah. where they do laundry because, because she, too. because oh, yeah. yeah. I have people. I have. I, I call them magical fairies. <laughs> yes, because you put it out there come and it comes back. And your laundry is done. Everything for me. Yeah, I'm happy. It supports the me then. To, I can work full time. Yeah. But see, my, my wife yeah. sometimes she feels like, oh God, I'm not fulfilling like my like my wife to do this. And I always thought, babe, I did not marry you for that. I married you because right. you got a fat ass. Yeah. You're beautiful. <laughs> And you're business she, savvy, she right? Double cheeked up. Yeah, like I tell her that. Like I said, I could care because she'd be like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry. The house is a mess." I said, "You just literally worked nine hours, did an audit." Like, yeah. I think it's in her. That's great. It's in her it's that her, she feels. Yeah. So I always say, like, you put the Aww. you put the most pressure on yourself. Like, I'll come home and the house is a mess. Like, I'm good. I just need to <laughs> yeah. sit down. That I know that's what is it Monday they're gonna come on Tuesday and, and clean. She works too, but yeah. she works full time and she doesn't have like a, just a normal nine to five. Like yeah. you know she manages people you're and like, stuff. You're like, give me one minute. All yeah. right, we're good. <laughs> hey, uh-huh. two, we're one maybe. Uh-huh. <laughs> maybe two. But I mean, at the same time, like. Uh, so, so we could agree it's just working with those kinks and not, yeah. not no, yeah, using it just, kinks it just, cop outs and just, just giving up all the time. So like for you, whatever your value is, like maybe you're not a great cook, maybe you're not, maybe, or maybe. I am a great cook. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm a great cook. But I think, you I think and your wife are both bosses basically, right? Like I, boss I feel, energy. Uh, yeah. I mean, I feel like we are, uh, yeah. but she allows me to still be the boss without having, you know, I don't know how to explain it other than like she, she even tells me like, hey, whatever you think is going to like, whatever you think is best for the family. But then I, I know, but I know. Like it's, it's, I can't fuck up. Yeah. It'll so, still be her like at the end of the day being like, mm, yeah. So, right? so, so there is like times where like, you know, you, you fight and there's things that we've worked through a lot cause we've known each other for a long time, but it's easy for me to be like, Oh, let me go on Instagram. Look at this DM. Look at this girl. Oh shit. This girl's baking and she's folding her husband's clothes. Fuck. This is, and then we do a little comment and then that girl like, Oh, leaves a comment. And then she may see like, Oh, he owns two businesses. Maybe he has money, which I don't bitch. So uh, <laughs> keep scrolling. Right. <laughs> But I mean, there's right. thi- there's things that I feel like Instagram takes away because now mm-hmm. people are like, oh, well, my, my wife doesn't, or yep. like even porn, like, oh, my wife doesn't fucking suck dick like this. Well, let me go and find a girl that is very, is more sexual on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. And then you realize, oh, damn, she likes to be in sweats and a t-shirt too at home. Like, this isn't what I saw on Instagram. Oh, yeah. So I think working through, like, especially oh, marriage, 100%. right? Like, I think yeah. especially marriage. It's a forever evolving. Now, would you be okay if your wife wanted to be like just not work and just be say a home mom twenty four seven? One hundred percent. Like, would you support her? Would you think lots of her? Or um, I because we've we've, we've had that conversation. A a being a mom job. is a work. Like, we've job we've, we've too, had that yeah. conversation and a hundred percent. But she would never want to. And it's like a serious conversation I had where like, hey, we're we're pretty comfortable now. Like, did yeah. you want to like take a lesser role? And she's like, uh, she thought about it, but I think she really likes owning her shit and I yeah. love that's honestly makes me love her and you more. wouldn't le- think less of her if she did choose that right like you would no, just be just being as a mom is love hard and- dude yeah oh yeah I, <laughs> being I, a mom I, is I follow a lot of moms and stuff being a mom like once you have a kid yeah. I'm not even gonna lie like on Instagram I'll post a lot of stuff but I just get I the mean, happy yeah. moments <laughs> yeah. right no for real it's like yeah. my wife is the one like I do the morning oh, stuff but yeah. like we have an understanding right my stuff's the morning her stuff's the night but she's the nurturer like I'm the provider and I feel like then I'm maybe I'm old school but that's the relationship but the, yeah. I'm okay with that maybe Ziggy's like hey I need someone that can cook and, and clean and then do you, my laundry right? yeah, that's, but, that's then, a, but yeah. then you get with the girl that's a boss or even like I've had a friend he, his wife divorced him because he worked too much I've also heard of dads like, being stayed at home dads and oh, the, I can't what, do and that. the <laughs> oh, wait, what? 
<laughs> no, I've heard. You've seen that, yeah. right? Like yeah. stay at home Tons. dad. Yeah. And the woman is just like the boss of me. He's like, I'm a stay at home dad. But people want to talk shit to him. But in now no. and age, like, can you though? Hundred percent, you can. So I mean, it goes back to hundred percent, you can. Dude, you know, yeah, we can. If, if, can you agree with that? Can we talk shit? Gender okay, roles you, reverse. I gender guess. Role. That should be more acceptable, right? Well, I, I do a lot of the cooking, and I do a lot of cooking in the relationship. Like I like okay. to cook. My wife takes care of my daughter. I mean, we share the clean. Uh, no, she does most of the cleaning. But <laughs> but see, I'm always like, I'm gonna pay for it. Yeah. So like, if there's something broken. I'm not the guy that has a toolbox. I don't know shit about You're cars. You're just gonna pay for it to get fixed, right? That, so like, if a girl, like if you were like, hey Jason, I'm thinking about dating you, but I need someone that's handy around the house. Fuck, I'm not the one. <laughs> but I can find someone to do it for us. Yeah. So like, I know some females find that like demasculating. Like, oh, this guy can't even work on a car. He doesn't know how to change the oil. You're never gonna catch me yeah, trying to change I'm the oil. Like, uh, London. <laughs> no. So I mean, like, like even you, Amherst, like I asked, like, uh, like you said, you want to get married. Like, what are some things that you look oh, for? Yeah, like, well, nasty. I think for me too is I think the thing that like a lot of us lack too is that when we find somebody, we focus too much on like the negative things instead of like um, focusing on like the positive. So what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses, right? And like, if these are your strengths, like let's work through your strengths and then figure out ways to like work through the weaknesses with each other because we all have our own strengths and we all have our own weaknesses. Um, Let me rephrase that. Give me five <laughs> strengths you're looking for in a partner that you would marry at your age, right? And I say your age because you're younger, right? Then she so is. So like, it's different. So you know, it's five different. must haves. What are five, five must haves? Have. Yeah. Like non negotiables. Like, you it's have gonna to be different have from these you five things for me to marry you. Like apps that are called must haves. Five of them. Like they're non negotiable. So, you have like, to have these five. Or I'll, what I look for, like with Five. somebody too, Number like things one. that are important to me is like, uh, like your family relationship, family like your relationship with your family, um, is like a big role. And I mean, I do understand that some people come from a different type of like family background, or maybe that's not. But but also, um, how important is that for your future too? So maybe you're not family oriented with your family, but maybe that's what you want, like for your future. Like you want to have a family and children and things like that, right? Because um, there are some men that just don't want kids and they right. don't want they don't value like a family that way. Um, so that's like a non negotiable. So must so want a family. A family. family. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. And, and be be uh, be a hundred percent. You know, be. Um, he has to have money. He yeah. has to make six figures. Like, like that stuff's okay. I'm not gonna put a number. Like you have to make six six figures, but you definitely have to have your shit together. Does like you have to like, make more than you. Does, honestly, does, does the, your partner have to make more money than you or, or as equal or less is okay? Um, I, I think that they just, I think what I look for in somebody too is they, they do have to be financially stable, obviously. So, but what does that mean? And be successful in what they want to do or know where they want to go. What, like, what, what does financially stable you know, mean to like, you? Money-wise, make as much or more or even if less or working toward. So I guess for me, I, I've, I've never been the person to date somebody for their money and right. that's not and even me not, saying it's like, not a shallow oh, I, thing I, yeah. right and and <laughs> like i just don't i never asked that question like wait but i have the people that i have dated happen to already like have money have money and that's okay you but, know what but, I mean. but, but when you say financially stable there could be a deal out there be like dude i make like 55k a year i'm financially stable yeah. for him but is it but that's what i mean like it's okay for to, you because at the same time too but it's okay to put I a number take on care of, yeah i <laughs> no, don't no, have no, a number i'm just gonna don't be honest i don't have a number really? on like okay, what so i want to be pick, pick a number okay. pick a number maybe maybe i should but i just i don't know i don't want to put too much thinking for me you got your dancing shoes on today dude you got your dancing shoes on you got your dancing shoes on you a year is are you and you're in love with him are you still okay he with should that? make more than me okay, okay. That's there not what I'm asking. he should there we he, go. I'm okay. just saying he should, he should make more than me because Perfect. at the same time i'm 30 fucking five years old right. yeah like, like i can't be dating somebody who doesn't see, can, you know can, can i yeah. say something from 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 a male standpoint like just talking to you like that's the kind of shit that's gonna get you in trouble because oh, you yeah. try to spare people's feelings and you're dancing that's you, me i do no so, do so like like right now like what i would appreciate if you're like hey look it i need a guy that at least makes 120 right if he doesn't make now how is he going to make like this, and own this, it and unapologetically own it. Yeah. yeah because don't say, well i'm so sorry i don't know this to sh because <laughs> 120 the, the reason it. why because the because there's a guy I'm, and <laughs> one the guy. Is not, i mean so that's whatever not a lot of, like yeah, it's not yeah, a lot yeah, of money i just threw a number out there i just threw a number out there say shut up <laughs> you but, tell them shut up <laughs> but, but what i'm saying is like you, you, this is where for me i feel like I'm, if i'm a guy and like we're at a bar and we're talking and you're like well it doesn't really matter i'm like okay i could get away with a lot yeah uh, that's what see. i'm thinking right now is like yeah. you like, don't really have a set no, no honestly, but here's like, my thing is i think i 
yeah, I I know what I want, but you're right. It's me not. T- I'm, t- I'm take in front of the camera, so I'm off. not trying to like <laughs> hurt somebody's fucking feelings right. and make but, you but, feel less of yourself because you're not there. But see, but, you know but see, what I mean? But, but that's what you're she trying wants, to do. She doesn't make anyone feel bad yes. because they're not. Okay, so again, but, but this goes back to you not loving yourself enough to know what you deserve. You're allowed to say, "I want someone who makes 300k a month a year." Guys, because uh, you got to remember. It's not even therapy at this point. Yeah, like, yeah. like what I'm saying right now, it's, it's just sign up it's just be. the law of attraction now. Yeah, you, you're you. The universe is gonna give you what you're asking and for. I think the thing is, is because for me, I just like what I'm asking for is just success in myself. Like I want to make a lot of money. I want to be successful. I so want awesome. those things for you me. Got that now yeah, you get to ask for more. Yes. So, but so, but so, I wasn't what is, like that. Like I said before, I was just like, I want this, I want that. So correct. now I'm not even thinking about like what I want in a man at this point right now because I need to just get ahead for myself. I want to make a lot of money. True. I want to be successful. Okay, but I you wanna, are right. Mm-hmm. So now, now you get to get clear. We know what you don't want. Yeah. But you get to get really clear. Yeah. On what, what you I do, do want. want. So when so in when that future. person comes in, you're not mm-hmm. gonna be like, oh well, I didn't know what I wanted, and here you are. <laughs> Get it? Like now yeah. you get to put out. You get to put out what you do want. Like I like what I this. want. Like like right now. Like I'm celibate. Yeah. I'm very. I'm very specific. I'm dating for marriage. Yeah. So I'm making that clear the moment someone talks to me. I'm dating for marriage. Did you I'm just dating become for celibate? Oh yeah. Uh, Seventy one days. Yeah. Seventy. Yeah. So when you but became celibate, you were, or you stopped drinking and you long. became celibate. Yes. Before were you just dating and just no, like I hooking up I or whatever. No, I haven't been on a date in a year. Okay. Oh, I mean, wow. Maybe I just, longer. I, just hadn't, I hadn't even, I you, hadn't, I wasn't attracted to anybody. You weren't like I wasn't hooking up with anybody. anybody or like. She was kind of like what I you sound like, like. Very just like about me, business, this, that. She had no time for friend time, loving time. Even if it's going on dates when you're single, that's like, you know, you, there's a will of life. You need to kind of make time for everything. It was exactly like just work me, work me, spiritual, which which is should be a priority. But at some point, she just completely ignored friends and even trying to be yeah. open to even dating somebody. Like, you yeah. know, you never know where anything can lead to. So just now, since she got sober, she's been open to like, um, she just got open day dating. So that's yeah. kind of huge. That's why we, when we both bo- first told you guys, you were like, oh, God, who's she dating? You know? and, and a lot of it kind had of to deal. do with, like, honestly, because I'm like, my program's my baby. You know, like my whole coaching thing, getting them together. And then I have these mentors that I'm always coaching with. And, and, and it had to do with, like, I was like, okay, well, somebody called me or hit me up. Like, it, like, maybe we'll hang out, maybe we wouldn't. But I, I mean, I'm not sexually active. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, maybe like for my scenes and stuff like that, but I'm not a sexually active person. Like, I don't have sex normally. Yeah. And so I felt like, okay, well, now that, like, I'm like, I'm clear, like, I'm getting really clear on what I want. Like, I'm crystallizing the photo of what my next level looks like. Mm -hmm. And my next level is going to be like, he has to be a boss. Yeah. Period. And see, but not to cut you off, but even that's relevant. Like, it... What you feel is about what's a boss to you? So you're breaking and, down. So now tell me what a boss is. If no, you no, want but, a boss, but, but, but that's like, what I mean. Right. But, but that's what I mean. Like I didn't. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. Obviously, you're never fucking coming back. By the way, <laughs> I already know she's like, she's like, I'm never coming back to this. But it's just more like you know what like, I like saw for marriage? myself in 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 my like future as well too. Is like granted, I want to be successful in like with what I do and right. make a lot of money for myself. But I do want somebody who I can actually have a business with as well. So I do want somebody who like when when I do meet them, I yeah. want somebody who is business minded because I would like to have a business with you. Right. There do you we know go. what I mean? And I, That's I so on your I list. do know that, and I okay. and I and I want more. Like I just want a best friend too. Like I think friendship is so valuable in a relationship, and a lot of times we don't really. Okay, we got two. That. Awesome. <laughs> Family, <laughs> See? business That's oriented. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, we'll best, 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 best friend. Best friend. Last time that Marissa was here. Oh, Marissa had a way worse. She's lucky. She's lucky to hear. Like no, because even with him too like we she dug into him too so yeah I'm, like, but but see the thing is, is like i feel i, I feel like out, i'm yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, i'm almost at a place in my life where it's like i i i have non-negotiables yeah. i have things that i'll tolerate yeah. i have things that i won't but what i've learned is like the more the faster you learn these about me your expectations are either here or there. Yeah. So like, I don't say like, oh, you know, I need you to be a friend. Well, what is a friend to me? A friend to me is X, Y, Z. Like, I need you to be a good mom. Yeah. A, so mm-hmm. like when I hear... Like, so when, when you're hear, saying like best friend, like somebody who's like, is that what you're saying? Like, what is a best friend to me? Yeah, no, I'm just saying oh, in general, oh. like I, I'm very clear in what I need with yeah, people. Yeah. Even like uh, for Marissa, like our business partnership, I'm very, very clear on what I need. Could you 
and what do you need? And then we kind of met and that's how, that's why we work so well together. Mm -hmm. Some people will be like, we talked about like she sets my calendar, mm -hmm. right? Some people are like, I ain't fucking setting your calendar. But for her, it's like, mm -hmm. she's so organized, it's easy. Yeah. So I need certain things to help me to be able to be successful, which mm -hmm. she's okay with. Sorry. So, so Which is, I, that's good. That's a good balance too, because I think for myself right. too, I'm such a creative, like, uh -huh. and a lot of creatives lack part of the business aspect of things not, not like the you know the numbers and all of that no stuff. it's a hundred percent yeah is you're like the a lot of creatives lack that business like aspect or like those things so i need somebody to balance me out in that way because like i can have all the ideas but it's the execution that i like lack because my ideas are great i can i can have them for days because i i just know i know what i want but i just the, the execution piece is what's missing yeah. like, how do i get there give me the steps and i can do it but i need someone to help me that so way. see yeah. so so it's three so that would be so a, a masculine is a person that executes mm -hmm. and I sets need goals a very masculine energy there we go yeah and then feminine creative creativity ideas is a feminine energy yeah so oh, yeah. men are the one that, that that go and they they execute it. Yeah, they have an idea. They go. So feminine and feminine energy is you like said. Like I'm a creator too. I'm mm -hmm. a healer. Yeah. Now, obviously, like I hustled for so long, so I'm very. I can be In overly masculine, masculine yeah. mm -hmm. which I know, like, if I'm trying to date a masculine man, you gotta I take it to, down a couple can, notches. I have to stay in a feminine energy, yeah, for this relationship to work. And yeah. now I've, I've I've learned that, but for so long I was I always attracted very feminine men, and was like, why do I keep attracting motherfucking <laughs> yeah. pussies? Yeah, <laughs> you know. But I'm like, oh, I get it. So. Now in my femininity, so I am a creator. So me and my femininity is like, I give myself like four hours a day to stay by my masculine. My emails, to-do list, get my content up. I, like I have four hours to be in that go, 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 do, do move. And after that, I'm like feminine dancing energy. in the pool. I'm outside, I'm back in the feminine. Yeah. And I stay there the majority of the time because that's who I really am. Mm -hmm. But you're correct. That's why I said, I need a boss. I need a very masculine man to come in because I want to lay back and chill all fucking day. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's true. And I think there's so many, even like this isn't to knock like, you know, the alpha female down, but there's so many women out there too that are just like, I don't need a man. Like I could do it all on my own. I could, but like. And, yeah, and that's the, trauma. The, and, and, that's and trauma. The thing. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah, but like. You're kind of on right now. <laughs> Jasmine. Oh, maybe, no, no. I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to distract that. This maybe is the part where you say you shouldn't stuff. You should you're just focusing on yourself. I'm, what I'm saying is, is I'm not saying I don't need somebody, but what I'm saying oh. is, is I'm not, I'm, I'm just. No, like girls that are like, fuck me. Yeah, and it's like, all about me. I'm definitely focusing on myself because I, in order for me to be like, obviously great for somebody i have to be great in my life right of like so i have to focus too. on myself to but make you're myself not like great. Fuck man. never I, I, <laughs> yeah. no and, okay, and it does you. have to do with like your your traumas and mm -hmm. stuff but but i in my head when i hear that it is it's like okay something's wrong through you're still hurting and and because oh, i, need, I, I yeah. don't need a man but i would like a man to be there with me because i'm sorry like if i'm i want to feel protected too yeah. you know and i want to feel like if That's something four. does happen yeah, if something okay. does like happen, there we like, go. Yeah. So we got four things. <laughs> must have. It only took okay. us. We're still going. Keep going. One more. One more. What's one more thing you, you want in a husband? I feel like I said I said a lot of things already. I'm just pointing out things that stuck in my head. Yeah, so it was like family. I I it was five. business oriented. It was um, masculine. Best friend. Yeah. Best friend. Best friend. Mas Aww. Mas I guess. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. So see, you, you know which so those are, those are your five. Yeah, but you're right. I those are must-haves. It's, it's you saw you guys saw me trying not to oh, say things dancing, that are dude. going to uh, like make someone feel bad about themselves or offend offensive and things like that. And that's again my issue because it's, remember, uh, uh, it, it, this is me season. Me, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all about me. So, like it's you season. Yeah. It's all about me. This is what I want. If somebody's not what I want, you, that's not my problem. You're offended. Yeah. Yes, feminine men. They should not be offended. You're just not for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to walk around all day long being like, I'm so sorry, dear feminine men. No, I want a fucking masculine man, period. Yeah. Like if a guy wants a dominant girl, cool. I'm not that girl. Yeah. I don't mm -hmm. want to out dominate you. I don't want to be the fucking boss. And I do say that. Like, and that's I don't. unapologetic. Yeah. I want a masculine man. Mm -hmm. Boom. But th to be, that's where all problems stem from is i don't want to hurt your feelings i don't want to be clear it's true it's it's mm -hmm. it, whether it be like business or relationship for no one's yeah. feelings. i know it, unless you're just coming at him to be like an asshole like you don't make enough money but if you're like hey look it See, yeah, this is where we have to be in order because again you guys you're you're at an age where mm -hmm. you want to get married and you have goals jasmine's a little bit younger so jasmine's like i want to travel i don't know you know so yeah. right now london may be the perfect dude for you now as you guys progress <laughs> is he gonna take that next whatever I, it is right no, but my mom says the same thing 
Yeah, I, oh, so, okay, so, well, but, but that's another right? No, yeah. no, but yeah, I mean, and, and I think that's where the issue, even like when I have, uh, like if I had an issue with somebody, I never knew we had an issue because no one ever told me, but I would oh, love yeah. for you to tell me what the issue is yeah. so we can sit and talk through it yes. because it's, because most of the issues that like I, I come across are people like, oh, I got an issue with them or, oh, AJ, so-and-so doesn't like you. I'm like, we were, just, like we, were, we were just cool. Like, why? And yeah. then I never know and it never, no one ever tells me and then it's when I see the person that they're like trying to be all salty towards me but I'm like, why can't we just talk or if you're another male, why don't you just come to me, bro? And I want you to come to me like and say, you did so-and-so. Right? And I think delivery is so important too right because if you're coming at me like you fucking did this like fuck you right. you're fucking stupid. like i'm not gonna listen to you i'm not right. gonna retain anything that you're saying like because i it's 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 so negative and it's just you're you're yelling mm. at me but if you come to me and you're like hey this really made me feel uncomfortable i really didn't like this this is how we work on it and you come with a solution like great like mm. that's so important too but, but, that but never, yeah i mean guys are a little different yeah. i would i would not be i mean i would be okay if he's like hey bitch this is what you fucking did i'm yeah, fucking sure. mad i'd be like whoa okay cool i didn't know that like my bad. Or I'm going to be like, yeah. well, fuck you. And that's how guys do it. I'm work. curious. Oh, I'm just speaking in like relationship wise, oh, okay. like communicate. Have yeah. you ever gotten like some actual like physical altercations yes. in your life? You a have? lot. But it was never like one on one. It was always. More than a handful? Yes. And it was Did you kind of win most of them? Well, you know what's funny? It's like I was had this conversation <laughs> with someone. It was I never. I'm from London because London watches when fight all day. And he's like, he fought so and so. I would win. So the no, no. It was, always, uh, it was always like uh, uh, people starting shit with my friends. And then it was a uh, fight there, but it was never like someone came to me and they had beef and we fought like one on one in the alley. It was like always you like picking a fight. No, yeah. no, I, I never do. I'm, I've never had. I've never been that guy. It's always like I remember we were at a bar. Like the last fight I've been in was <laughs> on New Year's Day, and my friend cut someone off, and we both hit red lights, and the guys jumped out of the car. Oh shit! And I was like, fuck. And my wife like, you're not getting out of the car. I said, <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, we were all there. We had like oh, all of our hell? girlfriends, our wives, oh. and so my boy cut the guy because we wanted to go get tacos, and the oh, guy, hell? the guy had a car full of guys and they jumped out and then my boy's like oh i'm not gonna let them jump out not nah. so then we fought oh, in the street fuck. oh my was god your wife, like, upset? she was so pissed yeah. yeah she's like i don't i don't like she doesn't like not like that side yeah, yeah me, but see, me this too the thing. i'm the same way she doesn't I'm like it but she i think she likes the fact that she knows safe. it's there yeah, because you feel she feels safe because it's there it's you know Protected. what i mean if i would have been like if i would have been getting my ass whipped i'm like i'm not getting maybe out of the car maybe later scared, like it's a scary situation yeah yeah that's true i remember a long time ago one of my relationships one of the guys I was dating, a guy came up, like, I was at the bar, I went to the bar, and so my boyfriend at the time was, like, standing away, and he saw a guy come up to me, and he was, like, talking, and granted, it should have been, like, yeah, I can easily turn this guy away, like, my boyfriend's right there, which I did, but guys are also not going to care, and I'm still getting a drink, and he never even came to, like, like, and, oh, and no, like, see, yeah, no, that would have, that would have like, yeah, yeah, like, I know that it's, it's, it's the, you know, it's the woman's job to just no. be like, I'm here with my boyfriend, which I did, and the guy still didn't care, and you're still not getting this guy away from me, you're just standing there because you're scared. Yeah, no, oh, no, shit. yeah, that's a, see, see, no, I, that's I, an I, issue. I, I disagree with that. I was, I've been with my baby daddy, what, How say, many years um, I was with him 12 years, uh -huh. and in 12 years, not once. Did I have a problem with the guy standing in, long, in front of me too long? Because when I motherfucking say no, back the fuck there off. There you go. You're gonna back the fuck off. Yeah. And see, I was at the bar though. He was. I was getting a drink. He's like, let me just buy a drink. No, my boyfriend's standing over there. I don't care. And then I'm just like waiting for you to come. And in my, head, I'm not saying to come here and be the, but like. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Me. Because this that, guy that's, is not backing off. I'm waiting here for my drink. But also, but that's but exactly your how my job, wife is like that. All you had to do was walk a few people away from him on the other, and just walk. Yeah, walk one person over, and that guy won't even talk to you anymore. No, yeah, I know what you're saying, and, and that's like kind of the thing that like my wife and I like when we go to Vegas. Obviously, she's gorgeous, so she, people will come up to her. Like I, I never forget we went to Vegas, and she was in the pool, and there was like all these guys around her, and I walked over, and I was just standing there. I mean, because I I know if she's uncomfortable or not, and then yeah. she's like, oh, like, this is my husband, and then they're like, oh, bro, I'm so sorry. I said, bro, they respect. I'm cool, yeah, yeah, but yeah. there was one time where she went and was on course. She went to go get a drink, and this guy was like going over her shoulder. I saw, caught my eye, so I got out of the pool. I just looked. And then she like, I saw her do this. And then that's why I said, like, oh, fuck that. If she, if she gets mad enough to put her hands on somebody, then, and then think about it. And the most recent was Disneyland. Fuck, I'm so embarrassed. Did you go I, over there? Yeah, oh, did yeah. you go over there? Yeah, oh, for you sure. You did, right? Yeah, but, because, but, yeah. But, and there are instances, yes, where you can like walk away. But if there's like uncomfortable moments or in bar, no. you're doing this, like you, like, yeah. And then it was even at Disneyland, we were standing for a fucking parade. This wasn't last time, so don't, it was, it was like a while. No, it was this year. We were standing for a parade and we had my daughter and I left to get something and I heard back my wife say, my husband's going to be back soon. But it was like a voice. So I went up to him and I go, what the fuck's your problem, bro? I didn't even know what was going on. Yeah. And I go, you got a fucking issue? He's like, no, no, no. I was just, uh, and he left. And she goes, oh, he was trying to take our place in the parade thing. 
And she's like, you didn't have to do that. I said, dude, I heard your voice. Like, I, and my daughter's there. I don't need to like find out the situation. I'll find out after because that's my family. Yeah. You know, so that's kind of the way I am like with her. I'll let her do her thing. It's almost like, go ahead, frolic, do your thing. You have to be wanted as a woman, I feel like. I feel like it helps her self-esteem to go out there and know that even though she's a mom, she's married, like dudes want her and she's beautiful. And I feel like that does help. Even if I go out somewhere and I'm with a bunch of guys and we're just shooting the shit talking and a girl comes up to me and like, you know, we should sit there and talk. It's almost like, okay, cool. I still got it, but it's what you do with it. And that, I mean, maybe that's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's your job to just be like, I have a wife, I have a girlfriend, right, like walk right. away and do those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, sure, yeah which yeah. I do. But I, I, agree I, I agree with you. Agree. Your boyfriend, your boyfriend at the time should have went up there. Should have, well, and, and again, I agree with your, there are some instances where, yeah, like you don't have to act like that, but there are times where, like I said, feeling protected is important because if I'm standing there and it's just me and you're saying he's not leaving me alone, like yeah. at least come and just, you know, you don't even have to like, see, I think that's so interesting because I'm the opposite because that kind of situation for me, protector means someone like there's a life threatening situation. Yeah. yeah. He's going to jump out and care for me because I'm the opposite where like a situation like that I know I have the power to defuse it for for my so I'm also too I only date men that would go to prison for murder yeah so <laughs> so, so, that's, that's a so yeah you're so really my, good you're my really thing great is I already know if yeah. the person anybody I'm with yeah they're gonna go to prison for murder yeah so I know if he has to come over here it's a bad situation and check it it, somebody's gonna go so to prison that, that's, yeah. it's gonna that's be a murderous the, yeah, situation yeah that's probably the difference yeah. too, too so yeah, I'm always just, like bro you need to back the fuck up we'll get over here and if it be up, I'll literally walk over to people and then grab my drink yeah or wherever I'm at or period somebody grabs me I'm like don't motherfucking touch me yeah. like I'm, I'm gonna fight you first before he fights you yeah. he's gonna have to jump in yeah. because he sees me fighting but, <laughs> like there's certain things I'm just not gonna tolerate yeah. but yeah. I never have a problem with men yeah like I'm like you need to get the fuck out of my face and they're like oh fuck okay the bitch and I'm like that's right I just need to be more like that for sure yeah because i'm telling you i've never had a problem yeah yeah i think that's that's how i i do need to be i actually got told that um like yeah just be a bitch like don't you don't have you to have be so to be. nice to everybody no. everything's not rainbows and butterflies amorous like just be like and no, i'm like seriously. okay fine fuck my, the next person who comes up to me if i tell you off just know damn she about to say fuck you jason why you bring my life into this shit sorry don't no, do it now like, my to cousin too said that the guy that she's dating like every time people are, or guys are just like hey how are you doing and she's with her boyfriend that she said like their well her boyfriend that she was at, like every time a random guy comes up to you and she's not trying to hook up with him she's just really nice like Hey, oh, hi. Oh, yeah, this seat's open. And he'll be like, want to stash? She'll be like, sure. Like, but she's not really like that. You know what I mean? So the, I guess that's like their issue. I, don't, I mean, it's not the same as your guys', but it no, reminds but I, me. I, mean, but I, I think it, that's but, fine. But again, that, I feel like. That's not an issue. No, but see, like, you see, I feel like London would not be okay with that. Really? I no, feel like I feel no. like there's a lot of, like, loyalty. <laughs> like, if I'm with a man, like, yeah. I'm not going to buy another moment. No, the seat's open. No, it's not open. Yeah. Like, because I feel like at the end of the day, like, there's a, there has to be loyalty behind his back. Mm. Because if he walks in and there's a weird energy, I look I look guilty. Yeah. So already, uh, like, no, you can't even sit here. perception of what it looks okay. like with that. So yeah. if you yeah. met your wife, mm -hmm. let's just say you guys had, like, a babysitter for your baby. And then um, your wife was like, oh, you just got a business meeting. She's like, I'm at a bar right now. I, I had a couple of drinks. You meet up there. And, like, friendly-wise, nothing, like, to over ex whatever she, she's like oh i just this guy's talking to me he's gonna buy like buy us shots and so i just showed up or i was there the whole time you just showed up oh, i'd be pissed oh yeah okay, for yeah. sure yeah, Dude, she's pissed. entertaining someone you're talking to yeah, someone else yeah, why yeah, are you yeah, even you're talking to another guy you're entertaining not somebody entertaining. else they were close and she was like oh he's just being nice no, talking to me <sighs> it, 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 body language but what i'm saying is like if i'm there and the dude and the, i think this is what guys think right if i'm there and i see you i i i just like when you go out because i want to see how you are so i want i want you to go out there go get your drink mm -hmm. you're going to get attention every girl gets attention it doesn't matter yeah, right true. so if you're wearing a short dress you're true. you're out i want to see how you handle, take how yeah. you handle yourself and again if like you mm -hmm. like you're really like get the fuck off of me that could be a negative because the guy could be like what bitch now i have to oh, jump yeah, in yeah, but yeah, at yeah. the same time it's like how do you do it if you're like oh yeah go ahead and sit right next to me like let's just say the seat's here and it's not close but oh yeah it's not taken but if it's like literally he's like this close to you then yeah it's uh, an issue why is he close why to is you? he close to you but it's yeah. but so for me it more goes back to like the perception of it what, what does if he it says look like? can i buy you and your wife a drink i've had that happen but i was there and i was okay with it yeah, yeah a guy came up to me I mean, there's nice people when yeah, just, yeah, yeah I, I guess it just depends on like, like the situation genuine, yeah. the yeah. dynamic yeah, of where that, you're at yeah. all of those things because i can well definitely, i think we're talking about I, a I wife an, alone oh, and somebody yeah. approaching her we're yeah, not talking yeah. about like couples yeah so i mean yeah we've been out and uh some guy and i thought it was stupid but i was like okay he's like dude your wife is gorgeous can i buy you guys a drink and i was like yeah sure 
Yeah. But I mean, I'm right there. There's nothing yeah. that's gonna happen. But I thought, I'm okay, okay, you idiot. Yeah, go ahead. But you're okay <laughs> with her going out alone with, with the ladies? Yeah. Like you're because mm-hmm. you guys trust each other, right? That's yeah. the, I think that's yeah. the most trust? vital piece of it all is trust yes. for sure. Well, because not only that, you have no control over it, dude. And once you you're understand right, you have yeah. no control over it, why do you even fucking worry about it? If I'm with you and I think you're gonna step out for two seconds and cheat on me, why the fuck am I even with yeah. you? Because you're that, gonna do it. You have when I used to cheat when I when I was a cheater, I was able to cheat with somebody in a bathroom while we were all there at the dinner yeah. table. No. My mom used right. to tell me when yeah. she was young too, like it would be a family, not her at all, but one of her friends, it'd be a family barbecue. No one even noticed. And yep. her, one of her friends yeah. with whoever, literally, and she'd be like, distract whatever and blah 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 and like that's what yeah. I'm saying it's true yeah. people it are gonna they're, they're just gonna, gonna do it, it. Yeah. they're gonna, it, do, they're it. gonna, they're gonna, gonna do it they're gonna do it they don't need to go they're out gonna, so now it comes back to like what what do you tolerate what yeah. do you not tolerate which is a whole nother podcast I, himself yeah for sure but, 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 I've definitely but, got in trouble for being too nice for sure I've, I've heard that I'm too nice one of my girlfriends too um, or one of my friends that her friend brought over her guy that she was dating at the time yeah Emmeline um, her friend brought her. and that because my my friend is very talkative. Like you're talkative, you're talkative. Mm-hmm. Like maybe not Mindy, but you guys are talkative. <laughs> no, but like genuinely, wrong. No, yeah. And then her friend literally got down with her that night. She's like, "What the fuck?" She's like, "You're too fucking friendly with with him." Blah blah blah. Like you want my and I'm like, and because she's down. So my friend was like, "It's not even like that." But if you want to fight me, we can fight. Yeah, yeah, I'm about it's it. It's just like what the heck? Like sometimes some of us are just nice just, and talkative mm-hmm. like that. Like we don't want. You know, I don't funny. want your man. It's, I don't want to be with yeah, that guy. Yeah, I'm just they, talking and being nice. And, and, and you're like, my best friend, so I'm just yeah. trying to make convo, make him feel comfortable. Yeah, and, it's like yeah. completely opposite. Because when we go out, I'm the one that goes out and talks to a lot of people, and my yeah. wife sits there, so she almost tolerates me <laughs> because she knows. <laughs> yeah, no, for us, like yeah. when we go to Ve- we went to Vegas, and I was like at this table, and then we had some friends over here, and she doesn't go like, where are you? I can't be with someone like where are you at i need to be by you like let me do my thing which i do and i just want to talk to people and then i'll come back mm. you know but if she tells me okay that's enough then i'm like okay let's okay. just share <laughs> uh-huh. i guess keep it yeah. in here the but again it goes back to like you very very clear mm-hmm. on what you need from me mm-hmm. and what you want mm-hmm. from me and i think if anything we got from this podcast it's be very yes. clear right mama d mm-hmm. and be yeah. your authentic self. unapologetic authentic self. self yes yes and amorous you need to have a number that a guy makes. We need to follow this up. After <laughs> and you know what, Everest, You know what? I, because for forever in my life, I was always so sweet, too sweet. And I, I want to say, like, I do this little thing where it's for me, like, I always think, like, okay, like, um, I give myself like different, like, little character kind of names. So, like, I, so I always think, like, when I got to set a boundary, like you say, like, I don't want to be mean. So I, I kind of like bitch mode. Like, even mm-hmm. though I'm not a bitch. But what I know, like, fuck, I gotta like set oh, a boundary right now, and I gotta say times. no, like, <laughs> and I'm really uncomfortable. But I'm thinking, okay, what do I? What's my tool? Like a little handy toolbox. I'm like, bitch mode out, and I'm yeah. like, I'm sorry, you know what? That didn't really work for me, but thank you, yeah. Yeah. because it's not who I am. But there's certain moments, like, like, okay, right now, what would Deanne do? You know what? You need to back off, but thank you anymore. Like, you know what? No, never mind. Thank you. And he's still on you. You need to back up now. Yeah. Like, this, so sometimes I have some friends that are really good at being bitches. Yeah. And I'm like, what would she say right now? I'm like, and I'm like, oh, they'll be like, oh, okay. And I'm like, oh, that worked. So sometimes you got to like envision and borrow somebody else's tool. Yeah. And be like, you know what? What would DNA say right now? From now on, that's going to be yeah. my new thing. What, what would DNA say was- right now? Yeah. And, th- and it'll work because I do have a lot of friends. Some like Jasmine too, like she's really good at like saying things up front. I'm like, oh my God, I got to speak up about something right now. And I'm, I don't know how to speak up or da, da, da. And I'll be like, what would J- oh, Jasmine say this? Da, 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 da. <laughs> because th- people have superpowers that I don't have. S- but mine, you know? you're not disrespectful though. Yeah. No, yeah. Course, you know? yeah. Like, like, I don't know. Like, I'm not, I'm not problematic. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, I, like, you know, like, you know, like, or busy get business done. Like, <laughs> like, what would he do right now? Like, I just always think like, what do the people that do do mm. that really well? Yeah. Let me, like, at that moment, embody them. Like, okay, right now, what would this person do? And then when she can do it, I'll grab her phone. I'm like, I'm just going to do it for you. Oh, yes, God, I've done that before. I'm just going to do it. Like, yeah. Oh, my God, what are they going to say? And then, like, why is that so hard for me? Like, just say this. She's like, no. I'm like, just say exactly what the truth is. She's like, I can't. <laughs> I, and I then mean, she's like, I, I sent it, and I'm like, <gasps> and then they're like, okay, and I'm like, what they say? Yeah, I'm like, okay. what's your like, issue? Oh. As long as, long as you don't put like, deal. don't take this personal, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. then they write it like, don't start that shit, like, don't take this personally, but you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> you're like, you know, you're people say that, idiot. like people are like, hey, no disrespect, you're about to say some disrespectful no, shit. No, 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 we don't yeah. do that type of stuff. Like. No, but I mean, we could go on forever. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Anybody that is listening to this, um, De- Deanne, Mama D, I like to call her. She offers Mama some D. great services. Again, this is our second you podcast. You saw me accidentally get coached today. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> they you, you didn't saw. tell me that I 
I was gonna be the victim. <laughs> you saw Amherst dancing, but I, I'm, <laughs> I mean, for me, I feel like every time I talk to you or I have you in this setting, like I learn a lot, and it makes me feel good that I'm kind of aligned with some of the stuff you're saying, right? Like, not that I'm perfect in any means, but um, I think the biggest thing that I get from you. And when you when you coach Marissa or Amaris or even your daughter, is I that you have to? I wish we had the Marissa one. Oh, the Marissa! Oh, wow. God, that one was home we'll Sunday. Run it back again. But but is that you have to be? You have to love yourself first and be totally okay with everything you've done in your past in order to unlock your future, mm -hmm. right? And then once you accept that, then I guess yeah. the easier part is just then you set your bound. Like, what do you want to achieve, yeah. and how do you get there? Yes. Mm -hmm. And if anything, if anyone's listening to this, I think it you have to take a hard look at what is holding you back and why yeah. and not dance around it obviously this setting's way different yeah. I, I understand why you would but in a the private why i would dance around yeah, yeah but as, right but in a private setting honest. it may be different so <laughs> yeah. um anyone that wants your coaching anyone that kind of is looking to get some Thank of that you. guidance where, where would they find your your information oh, yeah. um they could go to my um instagram at unleash your sexy okay. And then from there, like I have all my programs listed and awesome. whatever we're working on at the moment. Yeah. Awesome. So they reach out to you and you have, you have different programs for anybody. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have yeah. to be someone that's they older. They can be male, female. female. Um, you know, we have rebirth. We have sacred of a mastermind. I have one-on-one -on -one mentorship where this person, they you know, like you're with my world 24-7. Right. And we, like I coach you literally every day as lot. How many times somebody wants to handle it, like we can go through it. Right. So like there's one-on-one -on -one mentorship, which is you're in close proximity to me. Like I'm in the backseat of your pocket, like a best friend. And then I have group programs where it's like a group like this and we all get together and talk once a week. Or I have programs where you could just listen to nice. my less you know my lessons and my modules and do homework so it's whatever works good for everybody i love that yeah. and, and and jasmine what do you got next on the horizon for yourself at the moment um what do i have besides traveling because that's my number one thing is like doing travel vlogs but maybe um like a lingerie line nice oh i could see that yeah, yeah. i think yeah i think that would like even not in a weird way, but my dad said he's like, You love to take pictures in laundry. Well, he follows me, you know, like no, not yeah. on Instagram. Yeah. So he's like, So why not market at what the people are looking at? Yeah. Either for the women that are looking at it or the men that can buy for their girlfriends or vice versa. So I think I might start with that and then launch into swimwear and workout work because we do workouts. That's such a good, yeah, but, that's such yeah, a good lane. So I, I want to do like something with that. So yeah. I can definitely see that. So stay posted for that. Well, once you guys have that on, we'll definitely have to have you guys back. But again, yes. anyone that wants to reach out, um, the coaching has always been A1 when you do it on here. So yeah. I can imagine what it would be in a private setting. But thank you guys yeah. both for making the trip out here. We appreciate you guys you always. Guess. Until next time, you guys. Peace. Bye. Yay.